Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Ketchup, joined by my brother Mustard. I'd like to welcome you all once more to the PS4 Tournament's MK11 Open Series. But this is the monthly finals for October. Now we may sound like we're inside a tin can. Don't worry. I don't plan on wearing this for very long. But It look. does sound like you are talking a bit louder than usual. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I have to because I've got this thing on. But it's October. When else are we going to get the chance? Let's talk about some previous champions. Yes, and it won't take long, because we uh, haven't had as much for North America as you might expect. Look at all that mighty unjust. He has been pretty much undefeatable in North America, and we will see if that continues to be true all through to the very end of the month later on today. But to start off with the first half of the day, we have Europe to do, where it's basically been a, a month of Russian champions. We had Mirko from Italy start off as our current monthly finalist winner, but it's pretty much been a Russian winner of varying degrees over the last four weeks. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a really good month, but we could just talk about how these previous champions have been and how this last week has been, or we could just show you in another one of our glorious recap video. So let's check that out. The European bracket started off with streamer extraordinaire Sirius Hitman taking on Sui Frazier, a noob cybot player that we hadn't actually seen in the Open Series for quite a while. Sirius Hitman brought his newly practiced Terminator for the second week in a row, and the mix-up seemed to be too much for Sui Frazier to handle. Val returned after making top three in their Open Series debut last week to fight Scarlet Specialist Makaran in their own debut. It seemed like the newer the player, the stronger they would play, as Makaran came out the gate swinging with a 3-0 victory. Dubasic and Acid Mata had played many times in the Open Series, but this would be the first time since Dubasic had made the switch to Cabal. The mean streak was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cetrion, but Dubasic would have to try another week to finally achieve his breakout Cabal performance. In the upper semi-finals, Makaran had another chance to show off their impressive Scarlet play against Sirius Hitman. Sirius Hitman brought back out the Raiden to outmaneuver Scarlet's projectiles, and despite signs of life from Makaran, the Thunder God could not be controlled. He gets caught by the Amplify! And that's the grab! Sleeps Like Lion would have a chance to make his first ever upper bracket finals, but he would have to overcome the literal wall of Atadamata. Playing better than we had ever seen before, Sleeps Like Lion took it down to the very final round, where his intense aggression allowed him to pull off the upset. Oh, 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 here we go! Upper bracket finals was an unexpected one between Serious Hitman and Sleeps Like Lion, both who had been having an impressive showing so far. A high flying match took it to game five, where a surprise switch to Raijin Raiden and a last minute comeback advanced Serious Hitman into his very first Open Series Grand Finals. He's still my goodness! In the lower finals, Asadamata earned the run back against Sleeps Like Lion, who defeated him earlier that day. It looked like Asadamata had figured out the matchup during his lower bracket run, but a last minute adaptation from Sleeps Like Lion pulled things back in his favor. Neither Serious Hitman or Sleeps Like Lion had ever been to an Open Series Grand Finals, so we were guaranteed a brand new champion this time. In one of the most thrilling sets that we have ever seen in the Open Series, neither player refused to relent their aggression, but a final round uppercut brutality from Serious Hitman not only won him the tournament, but signified that he managed to do it without blocking in the final round. Oh, I didn't in North America, Akira Yapo and K7 Show Off began the day with a matchup that we rarely get to see Cabal versus Spawn. The one Spawn's damage carried its weight as K7 pushed through to the upper bracket semi finals. Moving on to an even rarer matchup, 2 Easy's Squander Collector against newcomer Aztec's Totemic Kotal Khan. Aztec gave a masterclass in the power of Totemic in his Open Series debut, dominating the set with a clean 3 0. Continuing with the exciting sets, the Mighty Unjust and Biohazard would face off in round one in a matchup that could have easily been grand finals. As expected, both players would switch characters, but Noob Cybot was the final pick necessary for Mighty Unjust to take the set. 
Moving on, K7 Show Off and Aztec would clash in an incredibly high damage matchup. K7 took advantage of Totemic's lack of safety, punishing for massive amounts of damage. Even a switch to Ascension didn't help, as it was Spawn that came out on top. The other side of the upper semi-finals was a rematch from last week between the Mighty Unjust and Teaser. Mighty Unjust made great usage of Shang Tsung's rarely seen Soul Steel to become his opponent's character, one that he was already very familiar with, Sub-Zero. Now, he just killed Teaser with his own mix-up. He morphed to the Soul Steel, and he's no, dead he anyway. Will. Okay, so oh, he will the Soul lose. Steel! The upper bracket finals would see if K7 show off Spawn would be able to stand up to the Mighty Unjust. The resounding answer was no, as the Mighty Unjust's noob Cybot was able to control all of the space that show off wanted to be in, winning the set decisively. Down in the lower bracket, Biohazard would now take on K7 show off to see who would get their run back against Mighty Unjust. The set went literally the closest it has ever been in the Open Series, as both players thought they had the health lead during a timeout. However, a 0.3% lead to K7 would be the ultimate deciding factor. Grand Finals would be a chance for K7 Show Off to win his first ever Open Series bracket, or the Mighty Unjust's chance to win his 20th. Sticking with the same characters, the set looked very similar to their match previously, with a 3-0 victory adding another victory to the Mighty Unjust's Open Series legacy. So the monthly finals is a bit different to the Invitationals. Players would normally compete every Monday in EU East and West and NA East and West. And if you place high enough, you get invited back and all that stuff. But the monthly final is about if you play well in almost any of these tournaments, you get invited back at the end of the month to play for a larger prize pot. And that is what today is all about. There's more to play for. And there are some differences in today's bracket than you might be used to for monthly finals, which we'll get into in a few seconds, really, because first place taking home that $400, second, 300, third and fourth, 200, and then 100. There is a difference between third and fourth for the monthly finals, so it's top three matters. It's basically double money what you're used to seeing, right? Like, normally on the weeklies, it's 250 for first, 150 second, then 100 apiece for third and fourth. Double the prize has typically meant kind of double the stress, really, as it has historically been single elimination grand finals. However, as we move on to the bracket, I'm happy to say that this is our first monthly finals, which is a double elimination bracket so this is what regular viewers of the open series here on playstation twitch will be much more used to seeing it's eight players double elim so whereas we normally talk about you know it's single eliminations there's way more money but there's way more stress and less room for errors not really the case today so i expect we will be seeing some of the most sensible and cleanest play from all these players as it's pretty much a bracket of familiar faces even like Macaran, who made his debut earlier this week we know him in the community so we know it's going to be a good show but i actually overall i'm very impressed by this bracket with omi and mercer starting things off ranks versus aso de Matza becoming quite the regular matchup orp and Desarted, again this is like the third or fourth time they have faced off in a open series bracket and then Macaran, who like I said debuted uh, a few days ago in fact on Tuesday is going to be taking on one of the most scariest the most scariest one of the scariest players overall in Arn Kratos and I think it's shaping up to be a good day do you have any keys to victory to talk about so, I mean, the, the only thing for us to really discuss today is the fact that this is a monthly finals, yet we have remained to keep the double elimination format. That's, that's pretty much as simple as that, that there's more on the line today, but this experience is not going to change for the players. I mean, it will get, I think, a bit more intense and maybe some players might be a bit more nervous, perhaps. But if we're talking, you know, changing game plan and stuff like that, you don't really need to for another double all in bracket. It's just the talent is there and every but player even, here is e super Even good. then, honestly, like, I think with that in mind, I don't think we have a single player in this bracket that would be that kind of, like, kind of you know big 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 stage in the online world tournament nerves i think we have eight players that are very prepared very experienced competitively um and i think that's very unlikely to happen but obviously in a single elimination those that normally don't get affected might get but that does bring me on to my predictions um i'm definitely 
confident in Arn Kratos. I think Arn Kratos, provided that he is willing to play a lot of Shang, is a clear favorite to win today. But even then, last time we saw Arn Kratos, he was using all on patrol Robocop. And I, I, I believe I like the wording of how he's been talking on, on social media since that tournament. I think he's done playing on patrol, but I do think he's still playing the other variations. Um, so I think Arn Kratos, provided he's, he's at least looking to go to that Shang when it matters, I have a lot of confidence in his ability to become another monthly final champion win that $400 but of course yeah we can't forget about the other players in the bracket and looking at the rest of the players here I really do think that ranks has had one of the most kind of like successful stories in recent months and even though ranks is yet to win a final he has been in grand finals before he's made multiple top fours by now top three his his progress has been so steadily on the way up over the last few months and I think going into the first monthly final we've seen from him in a while. I think if there is a time for him to really bring it and show us that, considering his character pool has been refined a lot, uh, I think we've got a really good chance to see some good stuff from him, but only time will tell as our first match of the day uh, is going to be Omi versus Mercer. But before we do start talking about the first game, I do want to take this moment to remind those of you watching that you can get involved. The Open Series is a free-to-enter weekly tournament series. If you go to compete.playstation.com, all the info you need on how to register, how to play, all the good stuff is right there. And even though we are deep into these open series broadcasts, it is not too late to get involved and get playing. And we'd love to see you. But that does mean it's time for us to start breaking down this first game. I think that's enough pre-show for now. Omi versus Mercer. What are we thinking? It's nice to see Mercer back. We haven't seen Omi for some time. I believe we've seen, you know, one or two appearances from Omi in the past. Mercer is much more of, I think, a household name in the Open Series. Uh, could very well be a, a good week for Mercer. And, you know, I think Mercer has been able to have some absolute standout performances some weeks. And then other weeks, he kind of just doesn't really make much of a splash. You know, I don't want to use the word inconsistent, but I think I don't really... I can't really think of any other word when it comes to Open Series. Because I mean, he always to, makes to be it. Honest, but it's how it's, he it, does in the Open Series that's yeah. up and down. But it, it's hard to make it into the, the stream because we have to remember that there's only eight spaces per broadcast. There's oh, yeah. a lot more eight high-level players that enter every week. I promise you that. So to even be here, you have to like grind for it on the Monday and you know I have been looking at the brackets and a, a lot of the times we haven't seen Mercer in a while on the stream but he has been like one loss of the week and that one loss has been to another player we would see in the top eight and that's what the reason he's not there you know it is it is a it is a grind to get to the stream however Omi you know a similar kind of story but much more known for that dead of winter sub-zero not as many top eight appearances, but definitely a strong player overall, but very big boot happy. I want to point that out about Omi, a lot of reliance on that advancing forward four. Getting those plus frames, really respecting that turn. I feel like Omi, I think the last time we saw him, he did a round start forward four, like in literally every round that he played in the set. The thing about being extremely forward four happy is that incredibly clutch reactions from you know, the defending player. You can flawless block forward four quite reliably, and Mercer's flawless blocks are a big part of this game plan, so no doubt if he's prepared for that, he'll probably punish it. Now, that's no confirm Ooh. from Omi, but a complete jump in for Mercer. I mean, that's just a best case scenario because I think he jumped just expecting him to stagger or something. He probably didn't expect the ice ball to be dedicated, but more of that forward four challenges the plus frame to the down one. It's the jump challenge. No significant freeze yet. Ooh, you know Sager. Mercer, he's looking for the mix. But you just take about clutch reactions and right as I can say it, we see that teleport instantly done on reaction to the ice ball. But right there, Mercer, if there is one player that you know might be able to like fuzzy that overhead low, he is looking for it already. Oh, I actually wonder if he went for a spear OS there with the jump kick. I didn't quite get it. Oh, yeah, either way, out. he's going to spend the 2 on 2. Like you said, cash out, get that damage over time. The grab yeah, game it. just to make things scarier. This is a good lead to have. Oh, down one to challenge, but another neutral jump. Mercer, not wanting to sit still right now, but when you've got this much of a life lead, and there it is, the flawless block you were talking about. Didn't opt to punish it with a flawless block attack, but the important thing is he's shown that he's doing it. Nice confirm from the low. Classic stuff with Sub Zero. Got to make sure you're getting that. Not oh, entirely no. convinced that was intentional. I don't that think was he meant to do no, that. that was 100% a jump kick into a teleport amp, but he missed the teleport and still did the amp. Because remember, the amp button is the same as environment interaction. Just Absolutely. A slight input error, but it has given Omi a big way back into this game. If he gets an ice ball, it's over. 
Oh, he doesn't have fire. He just got it, but won't matter. Second bar is there. Yep, Mercer. Spend the fatal blow. Not really necessary, but you know what? If it guarantees the round, it guarantees the round. And it doesn't. And considering it's round it. two. No, it's round two as well. So easy execution. No way you can mess it up. You know, famous last words. I know commentators curse, but Mercer going to happily take that first game. Now, if we break down to that one single game alone, it was just Mercer being very confident in kind of just slipping out of a lot of these up close situations lots of wake up jumps lots of neutral jumps and omi not being able to contain mercer but that's what mercer's known for at this point he is a very tricky to put a lid on scorpion isn't he and he does tend to run rings around some people hopefully for omi's sake he's not going to be another one of the players added to that list um, well, no, but I, if you're going to beat mercer you have to control him no, I, I think you really hit the nail on the head when you described him as slippery. I think that is the perfect way to describe how Mercer plays defense. You know, like he, yes, he knows he knows how to play, of course. You know, he understands the fundamentals, but he is also the kind of player. Um, I'll always say that, like when, when we see Mercer in this game, it's a bit like watching Mirko and MKX. You know what I mean? And I, feel, I feel like they are two very similar players. But back then, when Mirko was incredibly like ultra mobile always looking to just find that clutch reaction always looking to find that moment to just squeeze in a teleport squeeze in a down one and then boom it's party time that is how mercer plays but mercer has been able to make that style work in mk11 that's been the big thing about mercer right now is mercer has taken that style and really like seized it with a character that a lot of us didn't think would have kind of fit it in a competitive sense but mercer has really been able to blend this slippery very hard to pin down ultra mobile scorpion style and it works out for him very well as we find him with a, a one game lead here in his best of five however omi with the preemptive jump kick tries to confirm into deep freeze but a lot of damage already dished out the important thing is keeping mercer in this corner position and the second you limit those escape options it becomes much better for you against someone that's constantly it's trying easier said to... than done to corner scorpion that's not a oh yeah cancel. all he needs is a button on block he might be out i mean oh, there's a reason start up there's a reason Mercer uses Reborn as his main variation. You know, it complements the style of play so well. He's not about heavy hitting damage. He's not about anything except for mobility because that's the tool. That's the magic tool that makes him effective and competitive. But round one is going to go to Omi all the same. Not having to spend too much of his resources either. You know, he's going to build back that offensive bar. Goes for the back to back down one, knowing that Mercer is going to challenge your Scorpion players. They do like to use that down one, don't they? It is one of the stronger down ones in the game. Scorpion does get to start some offense from it. So if you're gonna have those those gaps in your attack, then you're gonna get hit by those pokes. And you're gonna have to play around it. Now I like what Omi's doing here. He, he's not even remotely trying to, to, to throw anything in the neutral. He has a bit of a life lead. He can use it if he wants to, but right here, a throw is gonna even things out a little bit. But there's a reason we're not seeing Omi go for like ice balls anymore because how many ice balls have already been hit by those reaction teleports he knows he can't throw them oh no whips a throw unfortunately that's a decent amount of damage for mercer to get for one bar off that and a lot a lot of empty jumps from mercer and omi is responding with a down one every time i feel like obi's trying to play it a bit safer less commitment and another throw but with Obi's another throw comes those considering Another throw comes another neutral jump from Mercer. Uh, there seems to be quite the pattern with both of them, but Mercer winning that second round. If he goes up two to zero, this is going to be quite a mountain to climb for Omi already. We've only just started the show. Well, I can, I can see why Omi might be second guessing though, because right there, like right as Omi tries to actually press a button to add, yeah, these jumps, we're seeing Mercer, neutral jump, back jump, non-stop. The second Omi presses a button to try and like, anti air him that's when mercer lets that teleport go and some that of these teleports the one reaction but some of them are definitely done on a read and when you're into this kind of room you feel like you just can't press anything omi looking for the crushing blow combo hang on a minute he gets a loopable forward throw plus frames and the giant damage on the interactable uh, there's one percent should be dead yep oh the flawless oh. block from mercer the clutch flawless block if he brings this alive. back if he brings this back from hang that on, escape hang failed. on Escape failed and a fatal blow. Oh, oh Mercer could not thinking. resist the temptation of a long range spear. If that spear crushing blow, that might have been the game, but Omi. He was smarter than that. That was just, he was neutral ducking at full screen for a reason. You'll go under the spear, you'll go under the teleport, you can hit him before he amps. Remember, Mercer was on magic pixel. All Omi was looking for was a down one. Now, Omi slowed that down big time. And I like the adjustment from Omi. He's being a lot less um, kind of. 
well, overcommitted in the neutral. I feel like in the first game and even the first round, to a degree, we saw a lot of just a lot of, a lot of ice balls, a lot of preemptive buttons, a lot of things that Mercer is going to look at. He's going to lick his lips. He's going to be like, ooh, give me these whiff punishes. Ooh, give me things I can teleport. Give me things I can jump at. You know what I mean? And Omi, a lot less of that in that second game. One game apiece now. I do wonder how today is going to go, because for those of you that joined us on Tuesday for the last week in October, pretty much nine times out of ten in EU, our games went down to, to game five. Like, it was it was a grind through for the how players. How long was the Tuesday. show? It was four hours and ten minutes for an eight-player bracket? Yeah, it was it was about four hours and ten, fifteen-ish minutes. Whoa. Even being over four hours for one region is definitely unheard of in open series. But when the players fight tooth and nail for it sometimes it's going to go that close isn't it anyway this classic 1992 matchup scorpion and sub-zero i mean you can't get more classic than this really can you however it's looking a little bit more advanced but yes that's true oh but no omi he finally got the duck but no punish well some of the tech still works doesn't it jump in be an anti-air teleport not so much an mk1 tactic you know mk3 started to develop that a bit more but i love it's the classic, classic. The classic. Oh, there's the overhead. That's not so classic. <laughs> MK11. I mean, that, that, that's what we'll be calling the classic 10 years from now, is seeing Dead of Winter go overhead into EX Ice Ball. And we'll be like, oh, do you remember he could do that? Yeah, I can't believe he could do it. Oh, that's a fatal blow sitting there. You always get nervous. Down on life, but with fatal blow, it's, it's hard to say that Mercer's behind here. Because he can kill with any touch. He's got two bars. He gets a spear, a teleport, a whiff punish. Omi has a life lead, but he can't press anything. Uh-oh. Well, you don't press anything and you get thrown. Mercer nice teleporting player. himself into the corner and doing a forward there it is. And that's the catch. Amplify. Bang! Omi. First round here. I mean, Mercer did put himself in that position. i got to say, the cancel teleport himself into the corner. Not a situation you normally want to put yourself in. However. And he's looking for the cancels. Sees there's no button, though, so he does cancel it. That's the scary thing about Scorpion players of Mercer's caliber, and that one he lets go, yep. Some of them will be preemptively cancelled, boom, boom, like, boom. knowing you're going to block, but some of them like that. Let's call it out. Mercer's almost done like a teleport on every single jump. Oh, and there it is, Omi. And that's all good damage. Oh, is this optimal? Oh, oh so not bad good. damage at all. And it already 400. used the 1-2-4KB as well, so the fact that he got that on its own was incredible. 400 damage and now Mercer in a pretty scary position to be honest. He's built his breakaway, but a whole bunch of this damage is going to be unbreakable and he gives himself on a silver plate. Wow. There's the amplify and the finish. Omi, these flawless blocks, Mercer. I mean, there's one message to be sent here. Stop doing things that are flawless blockable because he's going to punish you every time. Yeah, it is where that interesting dynamic comes from, right? Like, just because strings have gaps in them that can be flawless blocked doesn't mean you should, like, never use them. It is always a player-dependent thing. Are, are, is the person you're fighting, are they flawless blocking the gaps? Are there gaps big enough to poke that they're doing? Are, are you seeing them try to flawless block and they're getting hit because they're messing it up? Normally, those are the kind of questions you kind of have to ask on the flight, especially for these characters that have a lot of gaps, right? Scorpion, a lot of gaps. Scarlet. Um, you know, Baraka's 112, like, these real, like, these strings that are so core to the character's game plan with those gaps, you have to be doing that. But this is an example of Omi, he is, he is flawless blocking forward 3-4 pretty much every time. The fact that both of those rounds ended the exact same way, especially when Mercer did, like, he's doing it after teleport cancelling as well so he's getting rid of his defensive bar and then doing it so he is making it as risky as possible and that's what's kind of tripping him up here so he either has to keep doing it but save the bar for breakaway in case it is force blocked if he wants to or just be careful and start adjusting but considering he's down two games to one now he's only one game away from this round one losers bracket no one wants to be there Ooh. Now more of the back three is starting to be enforced. Here's the jump kick's going to hit its mark. So Mercer cashing out some chunky damage, 30%. Just like that. Doesn't overcommit to the back one either. Does not want Omi to kind of give him a taste of his own medicine. Those neutral jumps. More back three. Forever a back three moment. Oh, and the what, flawless you know what we just block. said. Mercer going for those, those strings with gaps in when he has the bar. Now, I actually think Mercer, normally, um, he's the kind of Scorpion player we've seen to, like, go for those flawless block gaps. But, like... 
Instead of finishing the string, he'll go for like spear instead, right? So forward three spear, forward four spear, anything like that to throw off the timing. And she does that against a lot of players he's familiar with. I wonder if it's like a, a, a technique that he holds back against. Oh, no. Oh, he definitely thought he could whip punish that. Okay, Mercer cuts the damage short. He didn't have the bar to extend, so he goes for the advantage. I respect it. Ooh. Immediate down one turn, oh, still. Not bad. That is the Sub Zero classic in this game. Poke into backdash, back three. Now, again, Obi has a lead, but he can't do anything in the neutral unless he gets reacted to. He sits there and blocks and gets thrown instead. It is an interesting game to play against Scorpion in this kind of scenario. Mercer oh. trying to do back-to-back -back down ones again, by the way, getting clipped by Sub-Zero's instant jump in. Omi looking pretty prepared for that outcome. And he goes for the ender, the shoulder, just to keep it nice Ooh, and the rare up. usage. Ooh, oh, he, dropped dropped it. It. he did go for the optimal stuff. And here. Wait a minute. Fatal blow. It's a threat for Mercer. One confirm into it, and he's won the game on this. Omi dropping the combo. Could punish him quite significantly. Can't whiff punish. This is dead of winter. The cold shoulder. Slower than the regular slide. I think that's why Omi goes for so much big boot. Oh, there's a downward challenge. And there it is. Okay, Omi. He dropped that combo before, which almost allowed Mercer to bring the comeback. But the absolute silver lining is he kept the 1 2 4 KB that he was probably going to use. Oh, and now he's got it for round three. This is dangerous for Mercer. And there it is. Empty jump teleport. You know he Mercer just... is looking at you when he does that. He leaves the ground and he is looking. Do you? Does he think you're going to press? Are you moving like you're going to at you? Does he teleport cancel? Does he commit? You know his eyes are just locked. Speaking of KBs though. Mercer spending that 2-1-2. Two, two. That damage over time ticking away. All back three moment once again. That overhead. Chunky advantage. Plus frames. But he jumps out of it for another time. Omi thinking, man, this guy, I need to stop him from jumping somehow. It has been working wonders for him. That jumping into another grab. Last time, there's still no escape failed. It's always been punishes or counter hits. Now, wait, the robbery. Do we see it? Do we see it? That's one. Oh, Part one. Fatal blow. He gets one hit here. It might be over. Oh, no, oh, no. Punish. Does he go for it? Does he go for a reset? Oh, that the was reset. so smart. That was so smart from Obi. If he went for the Fatal Blow combo, it wouldn't have killed. So he jumped in. When he, like, that's the only way we do, right? You do a jump in punch and then a standing for Fatal Blow, whatever it is you want. But Obi, jump in punch, slight delay to make sure the hit stun is done. Overhead Fatal Blow to make sure it will kill. That was so cheeky, but the exact thing he needed to win the round. Omi, <laughs> that was big brain. I mean, I'd like to point out that that was almost a full life comeback as well. I mean, that is the Sub Zero effect. Sub Zero when you look at Dead of three, Winter, man. <clears throat> when you look at Sub Zero, when you look at not not just Sub Zero but Dead of Winter, you kind of have to ignore your life lead because look at that sequence. It was uh, just a standard combo into Crushing Blow Ender. You know, that's big damage. And then it was a, 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 a sequence off a jump in, freeze, reset into overhead that landed and won the game. That was a, almost 100% in the blink of an eye because that is what Dead of Winter is so devastatingly good at is those kind of full life just deletions. So the fact that he was pretty much one hit from death, ignore that fact because it, it doesn't matter. All he has to do is hit you once and the sequence begins and clearly Omi I mean, this has already, I think, been his best showing that we've seen in open series. Because when we first saw him, I think he was playing a bit nervous. He was not looking nervous today. You know, there was a bit of a drop there, but ultimately, uh, he came to play today. And I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what other bits of damage he could do in this bracket. No, that was a really impressive start from him. You know, we had optimal combos. We had good reads, like decision making, like the whole shebang, right? And that, that is the Omi that we, we're used to seeing before. And it is, like you said, you know, the, the last time we saw him in open series, Definitely didn't look like it was the Obi we were familiar with. So, and, and, and that's happened to a lot of players in open series, right? It is possible for players to have bad days. And look at that right there. You are right. That was practically a full life bar. Considering it was like, you know, the hit into the 124 KB, into the hit, into the option to, you know, reset. And, and that's where Dead of Winter is just so dangerous. But Omi will be seeing no doubt more of that Dead of Winter as we move through to round two as our first match of the day is over. Now, moving on to something that has been a bit more of a regular match really by now is uh, Ranks versus Asso de Matza, the uh, ever-present Italian spring cleaning Cetrion specialist extraordinaire, whatever you want to call him. 
he's a pretty good Cetrion player, uh, is a, a, a nice way of putting it. But um, Ranks is a player that has also had a really nice kind of climb as of late. You know, we, we say this a lot when we talk about Ranks, but I really feel like it is super appropriate to him. That there are players in the Open Series going into... I mean, this is literally the end of the fourth... No, fifth month in total. This is the end of the fifth month of Open Series. And players like Ranks, we saw him in, like, one of the first weeks. And it was one of the first times that, you know, the two of us, you know, Ketchup and myself, had actually seen him in competition. And the ranks we saw at the start of Open Series compared to the ranks that we see now, it's night and day. There are these players that have had that kind of, like, weekly competition, the weekly practice, that journey of getting that competitive experience and now being able to take it to some of the best players in Europe, some of the best players in Russia. And Ranks is one of those players, mainly known for that Berserker Baraka, but Baraka as a character, while being very solid overall, does have some matchup problems. And one of those matchups is spring cleaning. So this is one of the biggest things that in my predictions today, I said that I think Ranks is a bit of an underdog. Um, considering his character picks like he really has refined he's gone back to this raiden more than before which is definitely something that has helped him out especially in these kind of matchups and it's it's not a bad pick etc even back at like launch i remember like vanilla raiden when so many people said that raiden was like one of the worst characters still had a you know theoretical place against characters like Cetrion. That, that teleport being such a pain to deal with See how much it's but it's work why here. when we see ranks use Raiden in matchups like this, he goes Thunder Wave. It's all about the teleport, the ability to kind of have that counter zoning. And Raiden is a counter zoner. That was just a good read there for us. The mass of that back one, two mix up the neutral duck, but he catches the oh, counter hit. That's going to lead. Yeah, we are. Lots of crushing blows already spent. The down two's been used, the one, two, one's been used. But from full screen ranks. I actually know I, I really like that decision to use that counter hit crushing blow though, because Asa Damatsa pretty much stole absolute momentum by not only doing a big damage with the down two KB, but getting that that defensive bar out and ranks responding in kind with his own KB to just to make sure that resources are not great, but you've, you've got the life lead back. There's so many teleports here too. And the delay into fatal blow, Asa Damatsa. If he's got fatal blow. All he needs is a two hit and string, and he's ready to have those confirm reactions. And he's going to win the round on him. He just delays it. He gets you to think of grabs coming or whatever the case might be. Here comes the mid. Boom. Fatal blow. Done. First round now for the Italian. What from those ranges like dash up mid is... Oh, no. And Asso is trying to give ranks a bit of a taste of his own medicine. As we see a teleport right as Raiden throws a projectile into a punish. Almost wrong button used. But there's a lot of respect that Ranks has to show the moment Asadamata gets put in the corner because the the teleport escape, that is just such a reality for Asadamata. He uses spring cleaning almost exclusively because of that teleport. Oh, speaking of which. Oh, it dropped on the optimal again, Ranks. His execution on that optimal hasn't been perfect as of late. No, he does tend to have a hard time landing that consistently. You, know, you want to get the highest damage, but sometimes when you drop a combo like that, there's just damage left on the table. Anyway, teleport. What's it going to be? Double back-to-back -back teleport. Stagger. He knows that Asa is going to show it respect. Asa Damasa, very respectful player on defense. And there should be some guaranteed chip. The moment that string was blocked, Ranked was going to get that back one too. And no last breath. Final round, but what's it going to be? Escape teleport? He's going to have defensive bar. You know, I almost wonder if that's why Ranks teleported himself into the corner. He's like, look, there's no point me going in right now because Asso is just going to teleport out. So if I force the match to be at the corner, at least like you're there. And it's, it's, it's Cetron in the corner. Like She has decent damage in the corner, but it's not like night and day compared to mid-screen. All plus frames respected. Oh, but he commits. There's that mix-up. Like, another drop of the optimal. So much damage being left on the table. It reaches a point where if the optimal is not working out for you, you just need to go for something a little bit simpler to make sure you'll get damage. You cannot afford to leave damage and, si and positioning on the table. You know, you drop a the, combo that, against that Cetrion, the, she's no, out. That's the, main, that's the main thing with Raiden, though. It's not even about the damage, because that optimal doesn't add as much damage as you would normally think. But the important thing is just getting the electric fly at the end. Oh, no. And there's the special counter poke. Aston Massa, the wall. We've seen him do that so many times. So I, I think it's, considering we're seeing ranks go for it a lot, but continuing to drop it, it it's, it's probably worth us, like, mentioning why go for optimals, right? Like, like what is the dynamic there? And usually it boils down to, and when we say optimals, we mean, like, optimal damage. Highest damage for a hit. And 
I know that there are loads of like combo routes that you can go with different times, right? You can convert with different things, but we're talking you get a hit and you turn that hit into the highest possible damage that you can get from that option. That is a optimal damage combo, and that's what Ranks is going for here. The problem is, usually optimal combos, most of the time, are a lot trickier or just straight up more difficult than the easier ones. So the question becomes, do you go for a combo you can't do 100% of the time, but does a lot more damage? Or do you forego a little bit of damage, like, you know, a couple of percent, for something that you're definitely not going to drop? Like, whereas we're seeing ranks go for, like, you know, uh, Storm Cell into Jump and Punch. He's going for the advancing forward two. Does he just go for, like, Jump and Punch into forward four fly or something a lot easier that's less likely to drop? If the damage is just that much higher, then it's worth it. There are some characters that might add like 10% or whatever with an optimal, but I don't think Thunder Wave is one of them. Like, I think it's mainly corner carry, but when you drop it that much, you're, you're, you're cutting so much of your own damage. And not only that, but you're giving Cetrion an opportunity to escape, you know, because you're whiffing a button, she's standing up, she's now got that kind of jump distance to work with. She's out of your setup, and that's an important loss, uh, so you have to make sure. However, as we're finished talking about this, we can see that Astamas is still looking nice and comfortable, and he just looks a bit more in control of things. However, the lone back one, no extra buttons. You know, if Ranks had done the back one too there, no doubt he would have confirmed, and we're staying so poke happy. That is a grab for Ranks. Needs a little bit more than that to get the job done, though. This full Good screen game. Have... Oh, no. He tries to move after his block down one, though. Aston Mata checking him. Teleports oh, wow. himself out. Yeah, that was Ranks getting out the corner. Oh, this is a no corner allowed matchup. Oh, and he commits to the Storm Cell, and there's no need to overcomplicate that one. The down two is going to do it. Man, the Yin Yang Island in the background of MK Deception. I hope they bring that stage back one day. What a stage it was. That was one of the best. I think MK Deception across the board had some of the best stages, right? Falling cliffs. Falling cliffs? Oh! Oh, yeah. Now, the corner pressure belonging to Asa Damata. But, as you said, no corner allowed in this matchup. Too many fast teleports. Ranks already out. And the cheeky teleport into back two. Do not think Asa Damata was ready for that one. Picks it up with the grab on the end. Not a lot of damage to that down four. Just to go under the high forward two. Back to the boulder. Can't get a lot of boulders against Raiden, because one teleport will punish you. Pick up and again, not a huge amount of damage when you got this much life. It doesn't matter. Ranks with a big play there. Uh -oh. Trying to wake up with a launch, but didn't quite connect. But gets the counter here. Okay, it's not terrible. I'd really need to call this. Ranks down on life for that fatal blow. One hit will do it. And remember, you can't break away from Storm Cell the way you used to. And add a nice chunk of damage. Oh, he just does it on its own. Oh, the master's oh. going to punish. Back Ouch. one Storm Cell. I'm not sure what that was. The back one, two Storm Cell, I can understand because the elements of a mix-up, right, between the, the, the two hits into the grab or the two hits into the Storm Cell, between they're going to duck the grab. But there, I'm not sure. Maybe it was just an input error. Because it is back one, two, and Storm Cell is down back two, so I wonder if it was just an, an, it was just a mistake. It was a clutch moment. Oh, the active frames on the wall. Forever hitbox. Oh, nice ant, yeah. Oh, I actually wonder if he didn't finish. I wonder if he expected a breakaway and he didn't want to just oh, fly yeah. right over it. I, I definitely it think ranks it, because if Asso broke that beforehand, he would have been able to punish you for sure. However, it looks like ranks, he's not getting much substantial damage and Aston Massa keeping the full screen, the chip. The second well, he acknowledges that, that, you have that a That has been the biggest boulder. deciding thing here, though. It's like Raiden is a character that should be out damaging Cetrion blow for blow. But Aston Massa is finishing his combos and ranks isn't, which is basically leaving them damage even. Which is not a situation you want to be in against Cetrion. All right, hang Raiden on. Is doing Wait a minute. Double the damage he can. Oh my lord! Okay, there's the throw. Ranks. He's bringing it in. Finish. Oh, well, there it is. The delayed button from Asso getting caught. By that advancing forward three. And I want to say as well, you know, just quickly. I know we are on the PlayStation Twitch. This is a monthly final, so on the chance that are people watching who aren't normally. Um, too clued up on like fighting game terminology. When we say like one, two, three, and four, we're just referring to attack buttons, you know. So if you look at the face, you know, the, the face buttons on your PS4 pad, you know, square is one, these, triangle is these two, things, yes. the uh, buttons X is uh, three, and circle is four. It's basically just a universal terminology used for like 
uh, a lot of fighting games, but it's very popular in other own games. So basically, whatever kind of control method you're using, those attack buttons will be those numbers. So if you're reading like guides or, you know, YouTube tutorials or anything and they use the numbers, that's why. It's like a universal terminology just to avoid confusion. So like a down two is a uppercut, you know, crouching triangle. Or like a down one is like a crouching square, a little low poke. That's what we mean. Now, but an important win, one, one. that's an important win there for ranks though, because Asada Master is the kind of player that if he starts to take hella games away from you, you find yourself in a position where it just feels like this, this mountain to climb when you have to win three games straight against a Citrion that's this defensive, this ranged focus. You have to work so hard every single round. It can almost just burn you out before the sets even come to an end. But it's important to be able to stabilize, you know, keep things nice and competitive. Uh, kind of finishing goal is it's just steps away rather than you know giant strides away but that's a punish as the massa minimal damage remember spring cleaning she's not a variation that's going to get loads of damage outside of kbs so those risks that lead to punishes outside of crushing blow launches gonna lose about 20 percent or so so i think that's a risk reward that you just have to factor in with we're funny there it is Another drop ranks. He has dropped that every single time. But luckily, he still has the life lead, so not to be too impactful. And as I spoke too soon, I mean, that's definitely not going to kill, though. Oh, no, this actually is quite a risk for Master of Matter. This isn't going to kill by any means. I don't even think we'll give him the life lead. It might only just be one projectile in it. Yeah, about 1%. Oh. Now, important that ranks was able to win that round after Asso used the but fatal blow. Did you blow. see how he, run, uh, how he won it? Wake up, I short mean, hop overhead after a fatal blow. I think that was absolutely at the bottom of the pile of things that Asso Demanza expected. But a great round for the Asso unexpected, ranks. my friend, yeah. because now he's won the round and the fatal blow's been taken away. But it is it like you said, though, ranks. right? Like, for ranks to win that round right after Asso spent a fatal blow, that's a big weight off your shoulders when you're fighting Cetrion. Oh, dear. Teleport. I just don't even know if... Surely ranks must have expected that to whiff punish or trip guard. Doing the back one, two into teleport when there was a full combo with his name on it? Not sure about that. And now ranks. Teleporting to down one, the cheeky tech, always. Oh, and now the pushback. So many teleports. Okay, now we're getting tricky. Ranks is really starting to make the most of his teleport. Now the mid, with the respect again, that's what matter. Back to back. Not even trying to press his asso. There we go. Oh, oh, big whiff. No punish. Oh, and he finally pulls the trigger. That was the fifth one. Not in a row. But after doing the four, he's going to finally let it rip on the fatal blow. And ranks now up in games. You're probably asking yourself, why did Asa Damaso just sit there and respect the back two? Or the back one, right? That string, that two hitting string. In the aftermath, the current version of Mortal Kombat 11, uh, there is some, there are some elements of kind of built-in mix-ups that you can do from Raiden's two-hit back one-two, where he does the punch and the punch. There are follow-ups that he can do that, if you get the right read or he overcommits to something, you get a giant, giant punish. So yeah, what so Asa Damas is doing, he's just waiting for expecting ranks to overcommit, and every single time he didn't. But Asa Damas bet that every time because if I block it, there's like no chip damage. And if he overcommits one time, I get full punish combo. So that was, again, risk and reward just calculated. But ultimately, that fifth time in a row, you know, <laughs> blocked it no, four but, times. But, but here, time. here, here is something about the risk reward, however. And this is something that Asu Demansu is doing a lot. He's actually getting opened up by a lot of these, like, back one, two, storm cell, back one, two, fatal blow, we even saw just hit there. The reason that's hitting is because the real change is Raiden's back one, two, grab string. The grab is now actually a, a true grab. If you're blocking, it will throw you, but it's a high. So it's like a 10% throw, and if you duck it when he does it, you get a full punish. You know, crushing blow if you want, counter hit, whatever. But it's 10%. It is a question of, do you keep blocking and take the 10% grab, waiting for the unsafe mid? Because Storm Cell is mid, mid high, so you can block it and punish it. Fatal Blow, unsafe mid, so you can block it and punish it. Asso is calling out the mid in a lot of scenarios where, uh, it's calling out the high in a lot of scenarios where the high won't kill, but the mid will. So there are a lot of situations where he can afford to uh -oh. take the throw and he can't afford to take the mid, boom, boom. but he's still expecting the high. <laughs> Ranked still. I mean, this is his oh. game to win at this point, and he's just keeping it simple now. He wants the damage and the corner pushback. Ranks, the tech's there from Asa to Masa. So much damage has been dished out. 
Now, you talked about optimals right there when he got Storm Cell. That was just raw jump in Superman. He wants to say, I'm done dropping these combos. I want to be on match point. No, but look, but I want to get the win. He cuts his combo short, and that's a dominant win. You get the corner carry, you get more damage than you would if you went for the optimal and dropped it. That's that's why it's important. And there uh -oh. it is again. The Raiden teleport effect. Now, this is where we are. You're noticing he's gone. I'm, I'm so fed up of dropping this combo. It's just jump kick Superman. No confirm. Oh. The down two Asso. A little bit panicking, perhaps. Push back. I love the use of lightning strike. If you're going to jump in and do Hell's Wrath, the lightning strike is going to catch that's you. Even, that's an element of the matchup we haven't even been able to talk about, which we haven't seen it much. But Raiden can kind of go toe to toe in a lot of ranges as well. It's not even like just the teleport shuts down the projectiles, and that's the matchup. If you want to play the range game, like lightning strike is good, the straight bolt is good. Like he has options. There we go, Asso. He's still down match point, but if he wins this, it's two two. Final round. Fight. But it's a good pick here for Ranks. We've talked about Ranks. His favorite character seems to be that Berserker Baraka. But if he was using Berserker against Spring Cleaning, I guarantee you there would be a significantly different matchup taking place. It's why yeah, Ranks keeps... By now. <laughs> it's why he keeps this Raiden in tip-top shape, because when he needs to fight a matchup that absolutely Baraka will not do particularly well in, he has this answer that can pretty much counter zone the down one Storm Cell. The classic. And again, keeping his damage so simple. He needs the positioning. And if you drop that combo, you don't get the Superman. By the way, escape failed. So if he gets any grab here, as the master, he's sticking out that down four now. He's like, get off. I do not want to get grabbed by you. Stay away. Wonderful read. And a whole combo on the way. Yes, indeed, yo. That's guaranteed chip to add on that. Still that fail blow is there. And so, oh, uh -oh. hang on a minute. Oh, that's oh. a to avoid! Wait, is that crushing blow? Is he dead? No, not, not quite, right? Yeah, 1% off. Plus frames from ranks! Oh, that was actually a really smart just, uh, time to go for that forward two. It's plus on block, guarantees the down one. So you're looking at forward two into down one storm cell, most likely, just to get that last breath plowed through. And there it is, Kid Thunder. What a finish. Ranks playing that really well. And this this is why, in my predictions today, I said that Ranks is going to be one to watch. He has been working on these other characters. This Raiden that... When he... The first time we ever saw Ranks, he played only Raiden. And that was like four months ago, I think. Maybe by now. It was a long time. And then for months, we've seen nothing but the Berserker Baraka. The uh, Noob Cybot here and there. We've seen a Scorpion from him. But mainly that, that Berserker. This Raiden has been noticeably absent over the last few months. And we saw him pick it for the first time in months a few weeks ago, but it was looking kind of rusty. It was looking like he hadn't played it in a while. It wasn't quite as refined, but now the last few weeks, or even say few weeks, the last week really, it's just, it feels like a longer time because we had him playing Raiden like a few days ago on Tuesday. But you know, that, that, that's what I'm saying. He's been working on this character. And for that reason, I think this Raiden is now back up to shape. So the matchups that Baraka doesn't like dealing with, right? The Shang Tsung. Uh, a lot of the time, the, the Cetrion especially. Raiden is a good pick for those characters. And we've seen so many times from, from other players that this kind of approach, it's so important to do this. If you want to main a character that is not a you know, not a bad character by any means, Barak is definitely not bad, but he does have those difficult matchups, you're going to need another character for those matchups specifically. And now for ranks, we could literally just see the Baraka and Raiden and that be his, his duo. But you know what? If it covers the cast... That's all you need. And that's what we're seeing from Ranks now. We're well, back -back well, well. As you can see in this bracket, now Asada, Massa and Mercer are taking place first round of the losers bracket. I mean, that's going to be there's tough. a time where that would be much. I mean, this is just the level of play that Open Series is starting to get. We're starting to get incredibly competitive after months and months and months. And our next matchup seems to be this eternal back and forth between Russia and Scotland. It's Orp versus Desarted. Likely going to be Sonya versus Shang. I don't um, know. But Sorry, I mean, not to interrupt, but is this the third or the fourth time they've played? I think it's the third. I think, I think it's the third. I think it's the third. And it's the second time they've played in the monthly final. I mean, this time mm. it's double in. So the two players, I mean, there's a quick breakdown here, I suppose, for those that might be tuning in for the first time. The Sarted, a Shang Tsung specialist from Russia, but not the Warlock variation. Soul Eater, the one that's all about the morphs and the, uh, the ninja swaps. Uh, and he's been 
specializing that variation for a long time now. And he has actually a had while, a victory. Yes. He's had a victory in Open Series. He's one of the premier Soul Eater players you can watch in the world, in my opinion. And then Orp, a player that this year has really just gone from strength to strength. He is the best Netherrealm player in Scotland, for sure. Injustice 2 was his first competitive entry uh, to the world of tournaments. And MK11 was his big push, you know. Year 1 was a bit rough for him because he had a, a big character crisis. Didn't know who he wanted to play. Didn't know who fit his style. And this year has rocked pretty much Sonya all the way with a little, a, a little dusting of Highborn. Uh, Katana in there as well. So now he's actually found his feet with some characters that really fit him. He's done incredibly well. And these two players in Open Series, they've gone back and forth. They always have really good matches. So I'm uh, I'm expecting a good one this time round. Result-wise, no, this, no this, idea. This, this never disappoints. This set, uh, this uh, is always really fun to watch. It's it's usually very close. I think um, Orp took it the first time they played. Zasata the second. And if, if we remember it correctly, and this is the third, then uh, that will be quite the uh quite quite the, the, the follow-up match right we have so many of these where, where players just repeat play each other week after week and right there decided trying to st start things off with the flawless block launch but unfortunately yeah, down three two down decided never misses a beat on those the plus frames to respect plus frames once more using it to jump because he knows orp not the kind of player that, if he knows something is completely plus, he's not going to challenge it immediately. You know, the longer the set develops, maybe Orp will start to press. But right now, Decided knows, you know what, I get a jump in after that. Because he's going to sit and block it, so I may as well get a jump kick. Good round for Decided as well. The pushback. This full screen game, always interesting for Sonya. You know, the smoke shake on reaction to ring can be used, but Shang straight skull alone. It's a nice little challenge from this range. Right, Stagger in the forward two, and now he's starting to mix up that offense already. The back step into energy ring, and he's the jump three. You know, Shang Tsung's jump so good. But wait a minute, full combo. Ooh, nice. Nice. So block again. Oh, oh cheeky. Very cheeky. Wow. Straight up wake up up two there from Orp. A lot of Sonya players now, they do like to end their combos in energy ring because the knockdown just perfectly sets up a timing for back one, but that's a full combo for Desarted. Gets the knockdown into straight skull, and now if he gets anything into Omak lift, this game's over. Oh, has got breakaway, but will he even have a chance to use it at this straight? Maybe not. Oh, and there it is, the anti-air fireball, Desarted. That quick little backwards walk before the end of the jump. Just enough to make that jump kick whip and all. Oh, he had the corner, but wasn't able to keep it. And that really is, I, I feel like that really is the biggest dynamic of this matchup because like you're you're used to seeing like Warlock versus Ringmaster and that seemed to be a little bit tough for Sonya. I don't know if Soul Eater is quite the same. I think it's a lot more kind of evenly matched, but... I mean, it's it, the existence it, it's still of very the corpse focus, drop that right? makes it tricky. And that's it. Yeah. It's the corpse drop that makes the matchup difficult for Sonya more than anything else. It's the, it's the, the, the most annoying factor and Soul Eater doesn't have corpse drop. So now that's a, a pretty big difference. And then a grand eruption obviously is good as well, but it's just different. The, the nature of Shang Tsung always interests me so much because Soul Eater and Warlock are so drastically different. We see a lot of Shang Tsung specialists now. They do rock both variations. Again, we don't see Spellmaster because it isn't very good. Um, that's not very practical either, but if we look at Warlock and Soul Eater, they're just so opposites of each other in terms of game plan that if you main Shang and you play both those variations, you kind of cover a lot of matchups. Almost every matchup is is on lock. So you can be a solo Shang player in this game. So Shang Tsung is one of the characters in the game that I genuinely believe you can just play Shang and just play both those variations and be okay. And there aren't many characters in this game that are like that. I decided trying to punish that roll, but a little bit off the mark. Oh, trying to jump out. Another roll. Goes in for the Another three roll. ender. Okay. Side really wanting to just make sure he's not at sweet distance on, on wake up. Now Shang Tsung's pokes might be a little bit irritating for Sonya. You know, she does lack that conventional, really amazing mid. However, knockdown, energy ring to end again. The wake up down too, I mean. I don't think it was too much of a bad option because Sonya, if she's meeting you with buttons, so that back one, the back ones are high. So if she has you in the corner and she wants to enforce that mix up of back one four or back one two, I mean, the down two is a good way of saying, nah, 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 you can't just high me on wake up. 
I mean, also the point as well that Shang Tsung's uppercut is like, was it like nine frames, 10 frames or something? Like it's one of the faster down twos. So if you think someone's going to meet you with a high from a range, there's no way it's going to jail, then yes, wake up with that 14% button. I mean, more against Sonya. She has 5% less than everyone else, right? That 140. Bit more impactful with the interruption. There it is. Not close enough. No, oh, slightly misjudging. Bit of a his own wake up. Oh, and thrown out. That's probably going to do the round. Bam! Decided back to the wall. No defensive bar. Cannot get opened up by that mix up now. Or you know probably what, wishing that Sonya didn't just do a backflip that far away in between rounds, to be honest. <laughs> probably wishing that we start the round a bit closer. The smoke oh, shake. Preemptive. Oh, that'd be nice. Ah, looking to pick it up. We're punished. Oh, but he catches it. Full combo. Boom, boom. Here we go. And the knockdown, 38%, just like that. Expecting disrespect, perhaps, from Desarte for another time. Ooh. Interesting play there. I mean, I'm pretty sure Sonya could probably do a single back one in that case and whiff punish. I imagine that is some tech there. However, with the fatal blow, locked in. Oh, dear. Uh, good to respect it. Good to respect it. If Orp tried to break that, he would be in much more worse for wear. Yeah, if he broke, yeah, she might have died from the armor break. But he's still not in a good shape, but he's alive at least. Now, what's it going to be? What's it going to be? Boy from Scotland, big trouble. But a fatal blow in a dream. He's got the bar, but he has to watch out. He can't trade a single skull. There is counter hit. Tried to go for an energy ring, but did not work out. Desarted now sitting at 2-0. Desarted. Really, the solely a play getting better and better every time we see him. You want to really know why? Is. You want to know my theory? Why is that? Because he won? Yes, indeed. I've said so many times. So I think I just seen... stole your thunder. I just, I, I, I should have been like, what's that? What is your theory? But then I kind of just said your theory. So now you don't face slap into you're joking. But no, basically, we've said so many times and it has actually become exceptionally prominent in open series that when a player gets a victory, you know, Desarted has recently won an open series. It was a couple of weeks ago he took first place. Senior. When Senior. a player gets a, a big win, it just tends to be, from that point on, they place higher than they did before permanently. And a lot of the reason for that is, a lot of players, there is that small bit of self-doubt or nerves or whatever the case may be that prevents you from hitting your absolute potential as a player. Once you get that big result, the confidence just erupts inside you. And every tournament you play after that, you just tend to have, you believe more in what you're doing. You believe more in the buttons you press, the combos, the confirms. And now Desarted like, is playing better hello. than ever. I oh, he's looking for the question blow. Yeah, I almost wonder if it's like almost like a, you feel like you've, you've already won an event. So like, what, what more do you have to prove, right? And from then on, it's just a question of trying to do it again. And I think when that is your goal, it's a lot less of a, 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 a heavy weight on your mind. But even then, though, decided is still sitting here at 2 0. This is a good lead to have. Like, they're close. They're two close matches, or at least the second game was close, but close does not matter. Decided is the one winning. And that's Orp as well. He's, he's committing a lot less to that kind of like, ooh, hello, hang on a minute. There's the knowledge. Interruption. He did try and do that in the last game, but um, he did get counter hit. Yeah, so I say counter hit. The second energy ring actually hit him and crushing blowed, but there's definitely some tech there. Orp. Getting the knockdown. Now, although Desarted is in dominant control of the set, Orp has done a reverse sweep against Desarted before in this exact same fashion. However, it was a while ago. So, you know, definitely different types of players now. And that's the crushing blow. The second hit connecting on its own. Orp all over the place to the side. Really is trying out, to, Every he's trying he's to wiggle out. Is landing. And now Orp's meeting with the mid. A little bit fed up, perhaps, of... Uh, <laughs> I say mid. I can't remember if that's a low or not, but it kind of serves the purpose of a mid hey, to shut is, down the wake-up button. It isn't a high, that's what matters. And not oh, again! Oh. Oh. Makes the that's same mistake. Hurt. Two games back to back, getting chopped. Oh no! The round, it, it the was round going so well. It was going so well for Orp Mustard, and then I think I blinked and missed it. The whole so round just fallen Here's the thing about that, that chop crushing blow. Um, this variation actually does have a higher chance to hit it because back one into slide, much more of a yeah that's much more of a threat however you can't go into back one slide on whip so if the back one doesn't connect the only thing he can do is the overhead so all keeps getting clipped by it in a range that he shouldn't and again another wake up button the block on the low that is the more safe option so decided knowing the orp is going to play it safe doesn't want to make a mistake and end up losing the entire life bar again oh the raw lift 
Uh, sometimes you can see a block late from that lift at that range. Or going in. Just grab. One more potential mix. The anti-air. Ample energy ring. Desartid's going to get clipped. And Orp. Right. If there's a comeback, he's made a start. And a big part of that just came from the pressure. The second Orp got this knockdown on Desartid. One thing Desartid does, or I guess doesn't do, is more accurate. Block on wake up. Uh, and it's yep. just the, the way he plays usually, around the it's, mix it's up. buttons, jump, or roll is like yep. the general go to that decides going for. It's very rarely fair. up three or up two, but it is some sort of wake up option that's not blocked. So there is, I don't want to use the term mix up there, but Orp is having to, I think, just be a lot more on it when Desarted is knocked down and you have to play around that. And it makes but it more prominent that, but, but that's, lack that's of why Desarted is there. Like, I, I think it definitely isn't a, a surprise that we're seeing him not want to block and wake up because then the he's playing against Sonya, you know? Like, and we are seeing Orp, a lot of the time he's getting hit by a wake-up button. He's getting hit by like a wake-up uppercut, wake-up down one, whatever, because he's trying to meet you with that back one. He's trying to turn a knockdown into a blocked 50-50, which is obviously kind of hard to, to deal with on defense, especially if, like, if you feel like it is just a straight overhead low guessing game, why take that guessing game when your guessing game can just be, okay, well, I'm just going to wake up with a button. Then. I'm going to wake up with a roll. I would rather take that mix-up than the blocked mix-up. You know what I mean? I feel like that's the mindset behind it a lot for Desired here. Oh, but he misses the end. Missing the uppercut is where the bulk of that damage comes from with Solia. Oh, but he walks into it. Counter hit confirmed. Desarted. Always paying attention. Back into this mid-screen game. The Ermac lift. Such a good air-to-air -to -air tool when that jump lands. And it looks like he's just getting immediately clipped. The meaty back three is going to come out desarted. These have been some fast rounds and a match point already for the Russian player. We'll see if he's going to finish this one off. Or a lot of work to do. He has been able to pull off the reverse sweep against the side in the past, but desarted. There is this newfound confidence and everything is working. Plus frames. Maybe better out this time. Commits. Oh, no big punish. Could have been a lot more. Oh, this time it works. Bang, bang. Bang. For Fatal Blow. Nope. He's almost in territory, but not quite. Okay, this will put him in Fatal Blow, but it's also going to give him not a great scenario to be in. Almost at throw kill territory. Oh. Oh, hang on. One crushing blow. Ooh, Wake up, Skull. That was a disaster. Oh, the Anya. One button too many. Oh, but he gets clipped by the overhead orb. The momentary second guess right there. No counter hit, no nothing. You're straight up hit by the overhead. Whatever he, he expected the... was not that. No, he had the right <laughs> idea there, though. He got, like, the hit into the 1-3 the fatal blow, but, you know, hindsight being super easy. But, like, standing one fatal blow would have caught the armor break, but that's, that's the, that, that is the mind game, right? It's I've launched you, I have fatal blow, I can cancel into it at multiple points. You have to choose when am I going to cancel and then break away accordingly. And uh, Desarted, he broke away at the right time, avoided the fatal blow, sealed the deal, got the round and decided for another time it's going to be advancing through. And another 3-1. Have we done only 3-1 sets today? I actually think that has been the case. Back to back to back. Well, we have one more match after this. And we're going to find out what the kind of next round of winners is going to be. But I got to say, that's just when you watch Desarted play, there just seems to be this newfound confidence. Um, there's just this intensity behind his gameplay that's just a little bit faster, a little bit snappier than it once was. And he just seems to get better and better every week. The Open Series has done so much, I believe, for Desarted that has allowed him to really excel as a player. You know, it really can't be understated just how important weekly competition for these kind of players is because they just get practice, practice, practice. You now, online and combat league and everything else, it is a good way to stay in shape. But when it comes to being competitively seasoned, that's where it gets important. Mercer with a 3-0 on Asada Massa. Asada Massa already out of the monthly finals. We'll be maybe seeing Mercer later if he makes top four. But our next matchup. I hope you like Scarlet, because there's going to be plenty of it in the form of Makaran, the Austrian Scarlet specialist who really made quite the name for himself, uh, I would say last week, a few days ago, actually, in the final weekly for October. But he's going up against the best. Now, if we're talking about Europe and CIS in the Open Series, Arn Kratos is the most decorated, the most seasoned, and the most successful player 
when we're talking about entry to win ratio. So, Macaran, I think he has his work cut out for him here. Arn Kratos is playing no I mean, games. Uh, he is going in for the Shang results, Tsung. The, like, the worst, the worst Arn Kratos has placed in an Open Series Cup is second. Indeed. That is the and worst he has ever placed. Not he has only won almost everything he's entered. Not and only. The ones he hasn't, he won. He got second twice. Not only is Arn Kratos the best player in Russia, but he is, as far as I'm concerned, one of the best Mortal Kombat players in the world. You know, I truly believe that Arn Kratos is right up there with the Foxy Grandpa, you know, the Fox, the Ninja Killer, the Dragon, like that caliber of top of the food chain. Arn Kratos, as far as I'm concerned, is right up there as well. And we have seen- I, 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 I feel like a lot more people would be sharing that opinion if Arn Kratos didn't have that unfortunate uh, start to pro competition last year where the one, event, for days. Yeah, the, the one event he could do and play in, he got third place. He, well, was, I mean, he was meant, meant to, to be a Brazil a game show. Event. It, it, it was meant to be a Brazil game show, but he got absolutely just on the worst end of the worst like travel luck you can get where flights were delayed. Wasn't he meant to be East Coast Throwdown as well, I heard? No, he was meant to be at... Um, I heard he was, at EC, was, he was going to be at ECT and had similar problems. I know he was meant to be at NEC, and no, no, uh, it was one of them was like intent, intended, but wasn't. It was one of one of them. But the, the the real tragedy was Brazil Game Show just didn't happen. But Rise, we can say that Macaran. You know, we've talked about how good and how impressive on Kratos is Macaran. We've already seen him in one Open Series tournament, but he is a very he is like one of the best Scarlet players that not a lot of people have heard of. You know, he is from Europe. Good punish the knowledge. And yes, you might be dead. Oh, not quite. No fatal blow spent. Macaran Scarlet really is. Super impressive and oh, oh just the trade. frames off. Frames off getting that win. A Macran, very dedicated Scarlet Main, like you said, he is from Austria. Where he started to compete properly for the first time last year. Getting really far at both Kelwick Throwdown and Viennality. Oh, there's the hit. Oh, Indeedio. If we're talking about Scarlet, she just has to play so methodical every single step of the way. She isn't a character you would ever really say, say has any dirt. She's just very straightforward, you know, and she's a very honest character. And that's one of the reasons I think some people think that she's maybe not as good as the rest because she is almost too honest. Uh, and a lot of fighting game characters, you know, if they're honest, they, they will fight characters that just have overwhelming tools or whatever the case might be. Not as apparent in MK11, I don't think, because MK11, I think, is a really balanced game especially for Netherrealm, you know, titles. But you look at a player like Macaran, and the reason he is able to be so good with Scarlet is that he's just put in the grind and the time and he has to do everything as optimal as possible. But when I you mean, fight no, someone I, like I actually, Shang and uh, Arn Kratos, he's, he's patient. He's just as patient as you. I, I feel like this is a really good matchup to bring up that, that, that topic, though, like in, in terms of like, overall Same balance. Scene. Like... MK11 is a balanced game in terms of like the gap between the characters. Like, yes, you're like top you're like top three, top five, maybe like a cut above the rest, but it's not by like such a polarizing, like they're all playing a completely different game, right? Like, yes, like upgraded is probably right up there and you know, characters like Liu Kang, Cetrion. But then at the same time, you look at the rest of the characters and there's a lot more kind of like, they're a lot closer together. And then when you look at the lower end of the characters in the game, like your Scarlet's, your Shao Kahn's and whatnot, they're not even bad characters by their own right. They're just, there are certain things about their game plan that, are bad problems to have in the meta of the game. And Scarlet's one, like, she's incredible with keep away and kind of screen control. I'd say mainly just not even keep away, but zoning, right? She's not about keeping you at full range the whole game. It's about just controlling you, zoning you, right? Keeping at a specific place. But when you do get point blank, she is absolutely at the mercy of flawless blocks a lot. And you have to play around it heavily, which we have seen Macaran can and does do, but it's dangerous. But in this kind of matchup, we're seeing that ground eruption shutting down a lot of these strings by themselves. Oh, hello. I mean, Macaran, he is a player that understands that to play Scarlet at this level of play, you just have to be so content with piece by piece, just chipping that life bar down. You do have the opportunity for big damage if Fatal Blow is locked in, or maybe you get a crushing blow or something like that. But because she spends so much of the game at this range, you have to be so patient with everything. And there's the immediate ground eruption from range and the perfect jump in. Oh no, Macaran! All that work for one good jumping on. Kratos is going to get big damage for this. Might even be the round, to be honest. 
no, how quite. much is it going to do? Close. It'll the be close. Macaron has no defensive bar, so this is going to be hard to avoid chip wise. Ooh. Oh, but there it is. Now that oh. is oh. a absolute win for uh, Macaron because that was a fatal blow. Now gone. Come on, Kratos. But look at the whiff recovery. He had time to empty jump and then do a ground eruption. Goes in for the micro duck. He goes in for the micro duck and gets hit for the 1 1 anyway. Instant jump out of here. No punish. However, it's going to allow on Grace to get a little bit of a heal. And there's that big teleport heal into more. The cancel to bait the button press, perhaps. And now Macaran, just like that, in it. He looks for another micro duck, but for another time, gets just hit by the 1 1 overhead. The wake up. these jumps. decisions. I feel like all of these jumps from Kratos, like they have all been at like the perfect time. Like he reads a slow button, a slow projectile, whatever it is, right as he jumps, and it's like every time he's bang on. You know why? Because Arn Kratos himself is such an intelligent zoner. He kind of has a sixth sense for when you're gonna throw a projectile, because he'd probably throw a projectile there too. You know what I mean? Oh, uh -oh. scoop. That one one has been a real problem for Macaran. Okay. Goes in for the teleport because he knows there's a break. That's smart. The next layer. If you know they're going to break and you can't heal, teleport. Reposition launch in the corner. That's Who's a restand. There? Plus frames. Arn Kratos getting launched oh, again. again. What's it going to be? Short hop. Any more? Empty throw. The tech from Arn Kratos. The release. The tech. Release block on the jump in. Arn Kratos, a master of that tech. Oh, no! Oh, we tried to end yeah, but too late. The grab again on Kratos. He actually might have already won. I don't think he can avoid the chip. Oh! oh, the crushing blow that you will never, ever see again in tournament, I promise you. Oh, my goodness, on Kratos. Let's, uh, let's talk about what allowed that sequence to take place, by the way. And it's a specific piece of tech that still to this day, a lot of players don't use, and it was tech that uh, Sonic Fox had originally started to talk about and pioneer, and more and more players. I'd say about mid last year, you know, so yeah, like yeah. not right as the game was out. So, like it took a bit of developing, but you know, not super brand new either. The tech of essentially when your opponent jumps in at you, what you do is right before the jump actually lands, you release block, and it kind of alters your hitbox. Um, it lowers so if you it. Yeah, it lowers it. So if you release block at just the right time the jump in pretty much just doesn't connect at all it misses and then you actually get to do something about the jump in on kratos is one of the few players that still to this day has been like relishing that tech and it's it is what started that whole sequence you know, Macaron had momentum, damage, 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 goes for a jump in. Well, it's, 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 it's jump not in like misses. jump. It's not, it's not like jump kicks can't hit people that are crouching, but like the time that we are all like muscle memory used to doing jump kicks is at the best height for maximum block advantage on the way down and at a height where people are blocking, right? Like that, that is the timing most of us have. And that tech just kind of uses that timing against you. Oh, another big jump in again on Kratos. We said it before, he is one of those Premier Zoner players, so he's going to have that sixth sense when you're going to throw stuff at him too. The heal. But that was a close game. You know, by, we are 2-0 up for Arn Kratos, but by no means is this like over as far as I'm concerned. Now, Macron, that corner sequence we saw, but a punish, unsafe overhead. Ouch. Oh, he definitely tried to interact. Speaking of which, oh, nobody dropped what? it. He must have tried to three up two and just got up two too early. Macron, an opportunity to come back. As long as Scarlet has the fatal blow, that potential is so real with the damage that she has! The flawless block on Wake Up. Last chance. Goes in for another jump in. But this time, another flawless block from Arn Kratos. His defense has always been so good. His flawless blocks are immaculate. His throw techs. Well, you'll notice you he's look also at things doing like, like the next layer of that release block tech. Like when he sees that the release block hasn't worked, he like does a flawless block. It's like almost like an option select. But if he makes oh, yeah. it a void and you still get a button out, then he'll fall his pocket too. Forbidden string. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh dear. On Kratos. Oh no. Trust no one, not even yourself. Big teleport. No punish though. Macaron needed that. He needed that damage. A throw is better than nothing, but it's not what he needed to get back into the game yet. Uh, current 2-0 on Kratos. This is his uh -oh. match point. Macaron. 
having a hard time against this. And now if Corpse Drop hits on its own, that is a lot of damage that you do not want to take. And now anything will pretty much do it. There's the jump in. There's the grab and the soul steal. Your you soul this brutality is mine. That's because Foxy doesn't really play Shang anymore. You know what? That is exactly the reason. That's exactly why we don't really see this brutality. Thank you for bringing it back out there on Kratos. Thank you very much. But, I mean, a dominant win for who is currently the best player in, in this part of the world in the Open Series. And that's been tournament proven. Uh, continues to just look incredibly strong. The fact that he's going Shang in this tournament, I will assume all the way, means he's a clear favourite. And uh, I think everyone else in this bracket, they need to make sure they're bringing their A game because Arn Kratos is here to play. He is not messing around and Macaran will see if he can get top four at least. Well, it does mean though that we are... Excuse me, sorry, I'm just doing a stretch because I've been hunched over that entire set and I should not do that. But um, that does mean that our second game to see Arn Kratos is actually going to be another one that we've seen a bunch of times in the past. It's going to be the eternal Russian Shang showdown between uh, Desarted for that Soul Eater, presumably, and uh, Arn Kratos for that Warlock, which is actually a, a mirror match we've seen numerous times. Arn Kratos has always won it, but the last time we, we saw them play, it actually did go down to like a really close game five. So, you know, we, we have only just begun in today's European monthly Open Series final this October. And I think we've had some really good games and we absolutely have uh, amazing ones to follow up as we're gonna be seeing uh, just at the end of this, we'll be seeing Omi versus uh, Ranks. Ranks. That's where it was. Wow, I absolutely just drew a blank. It's going to be Ranks and uh, Omi. And a match that we actually haven't seen before, so that's going to be a fresh one. And uh, I actually don't know what to expect, though, because Omi is like Dead of Winter 100%. I don't know exactly what characters Ranks will be using Raiden for. And to be honest, as much as we can talk about Ranks, like looking like he's mainly a Baraka player with like the Raiden now to cover the matchups he needs. I actually don't know, because when we first saw Ranks, it was Raiden. So I wonder if Raiden has kind of always been the pick that he wants the most. And, like, that's kind of been the change. Like, does he actually still play Barak as the main thing? Or? This, matchup, this matchup will give us that answer, I think. And the matchup is something we are moments away from actually being able to watch. If you want to get involved in these tournaments yourself, though, I always want to stress and push that you can go to compete dot playstation dot com it's europe north america it's na east and west and eu east and west if you are from that region you can enter both of your region by the way west and east a lot of players do it's how they get into invitationals and it gives you a better chance you should do the what we're saying. you should do that yeah ab absolutely because there's no, if you're going to play mortal Kombat that day then you may as well but that is where our first round of winners is going to come to an end. But we're now going to go into our next stage of things. So thanks for watching so far. Whether you're watching on Twitch or YouTube, shouts to you lovely folks. And we'll be right back with more Open Series Monthly Finals of October. The PS4 Tournament's Open Series has been full of fantastic finishes, killer combos, and a friendship or two. Let's go, friendship! That's what I'm talking about! We've seen promising new players and household names continue to dominate. This cannot be a full life comeback, surely, surely not. not. I refuse to believe it. Oh, oh, oh. Marco, the reverse sweep! Do not miss a single moment of the PS4 Tournament's Open Series. PlayStation. This is the Mortal Kombat character breakdown, Fujin. One of the newest characters added to MK11 and not after a long wait, with his last playable appearance in a Mortal Kombat game being over 10 years ago. Fujin absolutely boasts some of the best mobility in the entire game. With his walk and dash speed combined with high speed special moves, he is a solid choice for anyone looking to be hard to pin down. Downburst is tricky to get down, but once mastered has incredible damage output in the corner and a level of unpredictability with his airborne special moves. Like all Fujin variations, this takes a lot of muscle memory, but highly rewarding. Cloud Walker is arguably Fujin's strongest variation due to the Skywalker special move. 
This air walk can be used for consistent damage off of Fujin's strongest attacks and for overall positioning due to its cancel ability. In addition, you lose the armor breaking wind kick for the warped needle special, but this attack can be good for safety and flawless block bind games. Cyclone is built for space control and requires patience. Its most effective neutral attack in the push replaces the crossbow projectile but actually does no damage at all unless you amplify it, making it more of an annoyance to bait opponents into jumping which you can anti-air with the wind lift. Cyclone relies on crushing blows for most of its damage but in the hands of a patient player can be solid. A good character for anyone looking for high speed and mobility, Fujin is definitely worth a look. This is the Mortal Kombat character breakdown for Liu Kang. Liu Kang has been one of MK11's most common competitive characters, and for good reason. He is a pressure king and fits a style that resonates well with a lot of Mortal Kombat players. Lohan Xuan is the most popular variation and has a familiar Liu Kang toolkit, gaining a low fireball which adds a lot to his neutral game as well as his offense a stance with various options, and a parry that can lead to absolutely crazy damage if it crushing blows away from attack. Wuxi Legend is the variation for built-in mix-up options. You gain a buff which adds to your fireball damage, and the most common aspect of this variation, the teleport. This teleport grants a number of attacks that hit in various directions, and can quickly overwhelm opponents who are not ready for which one you've chosen to attack. And finally, a projectile parry. Dragon's Breath is for the Liu Kang players who want to add an extra layer of mind games to their play with some added risk. You gain a stance with overhead and low options, but most importantly, a command grab. Liu Kang is a character that keeps you blocking very quickly and often, so having a command grab to go alongside that can be terrifying, although dangerous as it is a high command grab and can be punished heavily. Liu Kang still fits MK11 very well. A consistent pick in all things competitive, we will no doubt continue to see more of him as time goes on. This is the Mortal Kombat character breakdown, Devora. A unique character in the world of MK and her gameplay is no different. Devora offers an experience that you can't really get with any other character in MK11. Overall, she has a lot of long range attacks which can be quite the headache for some characters, but where she excels in range, she is held back up close without spending a lot of resources, so you'll want to be careful with what range you decide to play at. Buzzed is one of MK11's strongest mix-up variations, due to powerful bug attacks that keep the opponent stuck in place, letting Devora be unpredictable in her offense. Rather low damage, but good at keeping opponents on the back foot while you overwhelm them. Arachnophobia is the variation if you want damage and tools. The Widow's Kiss Teleport can be used by itself as a whiff punisher or confirmed into for high damage combos. In addition, she gets a strong crushing blow off her front throw due to the bugs that stick to the opponents in this variation. Creepy Crawler is highly unorthodox and high risk, but its mobility is powerful and in the hands of a confident player can be quite a headache for a defender. The biggest trade-off is gaining a fast overhead in place of the universal Overpositor Stab, which typically serves as Devora's main tool for safety, making this quite the risky pick. Devora boasts distinct playstyles across all three variations, but can be a ton of fun if you blend well with what they offer. This is the Mortal Kombat character breakdown, Aaron Black. This outworld gunslinger has made quite a mark on MK and has changed a great deal in the various patches of MK11. Overall, Aaron Black is a solid character, with numerous strengths that work to his advantage and three variations that all do very distinct things for him. 52 card pickup is rather traditional, giving access to extra options from the rifle stance, most importantly a launcher as well as extensions to various strings, but the most notable addition is the Scud Shot, an attack that completely nullifies enemy projectiles and can even be used for damage. Barking Irons is more about mix-ups. Acid is replaced by unblockable dynamite, and Aaron Black gains a command grab. Both of these together inherently make opponents have to guess on defense and gains a deceiving amount of damage. Locked and Loaded is the variation that gains Aaron's armor breaking option, the Acid Paw. This attack has a strong crushing blow that triggers if the move breaks armor or hits while the enemy is standing in Acid. This move is also safe on block, making it a strong option for making otherwise unsafe attacks safe. Additionally, Locked and Loaded gets a Bear Trap which can be used for setup. Aaron Black is a character who has changed a lot in MK11, but a good pick for anyone looking for a character with strong offense.
Welcome back, folks. This is the PS4 Tournament's MK11 Open Series Monthly Finals for October, where European CAS continues to clash, and we're entering our next round of winner's bracket action. It's going to be Omi versus Ranks. So I believe Omi currently located in Turkey. So it should be Turkey versus UK, <laughs> technically, uh, with how things are currently going. And then Desarted versus Arn Kratos is going to be a Russian Shang Tsung showdown that we've actually seen in open series before. So definitely not a first here. But with Arn Kratos historically having the upper hand, we'll see if he can continue that. And then we have got Loser's Bracket action taking place off stream. We'll commence that on stream when top four happens. I actually feel like Omi is, I think he's the only person we've had on stream that's from Turkey. And that's that's something that I really enjoy about. I think so. Or at the very least lives in Turkey, right? Like, Because I, I, I remember that um, back during Biennality, Omi was there with like, you know, the, the, the Middle East crew. So like, you know, the Tekken Master, the Aziz, um, and, you know, the, 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 the group of players. But I think he, even though he's like from that kind of area, I think he's like... Like either studying or living in Turkey. You know, he's been there for like at least a year or so. But the reason I'm talking about this is because like I like how the open series has so much coverage internationally. You know what I mean? Because like even within, not even just in Europe where we cover all of Europe and CIS. You know, pretty much like a, as much of it as as possible. We know in North America, right? You know, we we get the rise of the players from Mexico, which is another region that we don't normally get to see too much in the competitive MK community, and that has kind of led to a lot of like interesting newer players that we haven't seen as much. And you know, especially now we're going so far into the Open series, I like how that's still happening. You know, and Omi again is here again to 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 play and is is having a good day so far. But is going to be facing off against ranks. So matchup wise, we don't really know what to expect. It looks like you guys do at home as uh, ranks has won the poll by a considerable amount almost three quarters in favor of ranks now knowing it's going to be the dead of winter i feel like raiden is raiden will have a better job at getting around ice ball but baraka will be a lot safer i think it depends on what ranks wants if he wants to like not take as many risks baraka will be the one here for that berserker but if he just wants to teleport around the ice ball at the right time kind of you know, swing for swing in terms of damage and, and mix up potential with how ranks plays, then I think Raiden could be the one. I think it depends on which element he wants to prioritize here. Because the, the problem with like it, playing characters that are safe versus Sub-Zero, you can be safe but be minus enough that you know the mind game is like, I've blocked something. Is he going to throw overhead or low, right? And that's kind of like the Dead of Winter. Especially as Omi likes to play Dead of Winter. That, that really is it. Is that, that mix-up becomes a lot more scary in Dead of Winter if we're talking about damage alone. Now, that exists in all variations. Uh, bless you. However, thank you. in Dead of Winter, it's just the pound for pound. That damage is real. Now, I guess this is a matchup where Ranks goes, I'm going to play Berserker. So we were asking this question before the break of does Ranks... Has he made not a complete transition to Raiden, but is he favoring the Raiden? Because we've seen it a lot. I guess this does kind of confirm our theory that it remains matchup dependent. Baraka seems to be what he uses for a bunch of matchups, and then Raiden if he has to basically deal with counter zoning, which is what Baraka would struggle against. So the two-person team at the very least, and the fact that we haven't seen his Berserker for a while excites me because I love a bit of Berserker. It's so fun to watch. No, like, Ranks has almost single-handed made me believe in this variation. You know, I, I think it really has been something that we underrated early on. I think the damage is not as low as we thought. The armor break ever since Aftermath, this variation has been a lot better for that reason as well. Oh, but the commitment. And look, right this. Jab punish into 25%. That is like... Unbreakable. Yeah, that, that is like... It's average damage, but it's good corner carry. Corners versus variation really helps as well. And it's all safe, you know, safe on block two if you have options for that. It's just a, a, a just a, a tidy variation. Way over commits into that string though as Ranks gets a full punish. And I say full punish because a reversal throw punish into the corner is still very costly. And here comes the mix, like Kebab. Down one. Expecting Omi to maybe challenge that. Gets clipped! Oh, oh my! The block late. Hello. The block late crushing blow. I think that might be the first time I've seen that hit in a tournament match. I can't remember the last time I saw a blade charge crushing blow that wasn't thanks to the armor break. I mean, it does that that move does exist due to 
Wait, I think it was after Barakazurka, though. I think he used that. Yeah, yeah, no, I think Omi tried to flawless block and just mess, yeah. uh, mistimed it. And because he mistimed the flawless block, it counted as a block late. That must be why it exists, to be fair. It's not something that you see all the time, but... Now here comes the mix. Omi not hit confirming that low, though. Could be getting full combos. He is in the lead here, but there could be at least half of that health for ranks gone for the defense. Uh -oh. Here comes the throw game. Baraka's yeah, throw game in the corner erupts. Yeah, exactly. This, this is why Baraka in the corner is so dangerous. Because his throws loop. Fatal blows in play. Plus frames. The respect. Ranks. Oh, the trade. Good actually for ranks. That would have launched and won the round for Omi. Tries to up two. But the one-two so fast. And the deep freeze damaging on its own is going to make it one-one. Okay. Now, Fatal Blow still exists for both players. This could be quite an explosive final round. Ooh, Here we go. Lovely it. confirm. If he gets a hit now, you know Omi. He's going to spend that one-two-four crushing glow. Oh, that's a side switch. Oh, side switch. That's not good. Oh, and again, you see Omi trying to force block. I feel like Omi is trying to flawless lock everywhere that he can, you know? And that really is kind of putting that doubt. Nice crossover. That's like the, the same follow up he uses off the, the uppercut crushing blow. What awesome that's like max text. damage. Wonderful text from Omi. You could tell ranks. I think he was looking for the counter hit there. Wake up roll just in case, but he's losing. Defensive bar. Can't afford to get hit. Wait a minute. Let Kebab. If he gets hit now, clean. Empty jump throw. And now the Fatal Blow is a huge threat on both sides. He's fishing for it. Oh, the down four whips. And that'll be the game one for Omi. But that was, uh, I mean, that was a heavy hitting matchup, Mustard. They were just swinging every step of the way. But it did ultimately boil down to what I was kind of talking about before when I said that. So being safe against Sub-Zero is one thing. But if you're in a situation where you are safe but minus that you have to worry about him like guaranteeing a button before you move, that's where it gets dangerous because you'll be safe, but you're forcing yourself into a situation that you kind of have to take a mix up. In that kind of scenario right there, that's exactly what we saw seal the deal. You know, he went for the overhead because he was safe, but he was minus enough to not move. Overhead connected, fatal blow follows, and you're dead. So it's that kind of, it's a mix up, so it's not a guaranteed damage by any means, but it's definitely something you have to worry about. Still though, relatively close game. Omi looking a little bit rough in round one, but was able to kind of stabilize things somewhat moving through. And I like the way Ranks is playing though. I feel like he really is heavily looking for the flawless blocks because Omi is flawless blocking pretty much every time he can. Like if there's a gap, he's flawless blocking it, which is also why we're seeing him get hit by almost every leg kebab. But the few times that he doesn't leg kebab and he finishes a string, he's getting launched for it. Oh, there's that immediate anti-air again. The use of back two for Omi has been fantastic today. Buffering it from far ranges too. Ranks doesn't hold the forward 4-4 just yet, I don't think. Doesn't want to lose too much. Ah, oh, that's going to catch. Try to flawless block and Omi now. There's no way he can break, so we just go into big damage. Ranks, if you have the breaker, he's probably going to do the blade charge. But if you don't, Barakazurka does more damage. And we'll look at your bar for that. Overhead block. Oh, wow. He's dead. Punch. <laughs> Baraka damage. Love it. I think that might be one of the highest damage, like, and specials in the game. Because Baraka Zerker into Blade Charge Ender. I think it's almost, it's almost 19% by itself. I don't think of any other specials that by themselves do that much. Let's confirm. Omi Important confirm. Gets it this time. Getting himself out of the corner and not only that, but allowing Baraka to get cornered instead. But the escape failed, so music to your ears as a Sub-Zero player. You've got the threat, oh, however, side switch. There's so much side switch in this lineup. You know, the, the Sub-Zero freeze jumping, Baraka. So many moves where he can fling you over his head. Here we go, restand situation. Well, I say keep them standing, I guess is more accurate. Oh, oh he, he went for the back for the three. The forbidden. He went for the back three, Kebab, yeah. Punish! Oh, is he dead? Punch! No! Oh. Wait a minute. Text. No! Oh, drop kick for Baraka. That was, uh, that made me, that made me tense a little bit, Mustard. I tensed a little bit. But Obi was still one hit away. As soon as Sub-Zero's got Fatal Blow, you might die. You have to remember, Sub-Zero is one of those characters where his, like, combos have so few hits in them. 
and the ice ball doesn't scale that hard that like you get hit by the fatal blow it's going to add more damage than almost any fatal blow in the game so it just it doesn't have op the opportunity to scale like the other ones do there's no hits the hits don't actually add as much scaling as you'd think but no that was a much better round and again it's, it comes down to that corner you know i i, I think it really is a, a game of across the board like baraka is just a very corner happy character Ooh, really i wonder the one this this is a change i was not expecting i tell this you is, no, um, but spawn he has become increasingly more popular in i know the series hasn't he and especially this variation i feel like the more we go on because th there, there are players that are really kind of like beginning to be a lot more successful in the competitive space right and, and spawn is one of those characters that has been kind of low-key like decent but not super played but the more we see him, the stronger he seems to look. Obviously not without his issues, but that damage. is hard, hey, hard mean, to turn your nose up at that damage. Hitting like a truck always helps, especially if you're like the one who has some of the absolute highest practical damage off a lot of touches. Very similar to that Marauder Baraka, but there's the range, the whiff punish ability of 3-4. Now the flawless block and the jump in to immediately shut it down. Getting through the leg kebab, oh. commits to the charge. Interesting stuff. Damage though, respect it. I did not even know Omi had a spawn, so always a pleasant surprise. No, so as far as I know, Omi is kind of bit. Okay, now that is actually quite a gorilla mix-up. Because 3-4 into projectile is what a lot of people do for safety, right? They'll do 3-4 blast and an amp it. But that's one of the few strings that you have that doesn't gel into fireball. So I wonder if Omi knows that ranks is looking to duck the fireball and he's just throwing out the charge yeah because right there ranks he just ducks the fireball he clearly knows the matchup and omi is using that against him by going for three four charge max range the important thing there is not damage it is the side switch because now here comes baraka time to play the up two wow spawns up two reaching so far he's able to punish baraka from that distance lovely throw oh, take here throw from takes. omi no, so omi crispy did. This has been the biggest adjustment because this like throw game has been so important for ranks that Omi just is not letting him punish. Oh, I yeah, that's Baraka can punish it. I don't know. I mean, he, we did see that ranks did try and forward four four earlier, but the actual initial forward four didn't connect. So perhaps it might be tricky. Omi, comfortable distance and with the fatal blow for ranks, that could have been dangerous, but doesn't get clipped. Let it rock. Oh, oh he did. that's the round. That's the round for sure. And there's no need to overcomplicate. Ranks can save the fatal blow. Omi can as well. That's a lot of resources in the tank for big damage on both sides, to be honest. Max range. Looks for it. Oh, hang on. Using all that defensive Get bar, though. Get back in there. Now Ranks. Oh, oh let's it rock. Let's it go all the way. The overhead. There is that mix-up forever. Escape failed, was that? That was a really late escape failed as well. Uh-oh. Oh, he's so worried. Oh, no! It's all going downhill for poor old Omi. He had such a wonderful start, and Baraka is going to oh cut goodness. and chop and slice his way into the next game. I like what I'm seeing here from Ranks. Omi, I mean, the second he got put in that corner, it was that blade charge, that one blade charge that just went whoop, flame over his head. And then the rest of the game was left-hand territory, wasn't it? Oh, I, I feel like this is just the ultimate in utility, Baraka, where you the only thing you don't have in this variation is a launch. Like, you have everything else. You have corner carry, you have safety, you have chip damage, you have flawless block, you know, things to plug flawless block. You have, um, you know, unbreakable damage. You have decent damage if you do get them to launch with your one-time crushing blows or you know, whatever it may be. You keep Chop Chop, so you have that mind game that goes with it, right? The, the eternal pain in the backside that is Chop Chop Blades. And that, that's where I think Berserker really shines, you know? It's just having a bit of just about everything. But in a way that is really tough to deal with. And now only going back to that Dead of Winter. I think the sport, it was worth a try. Yeah, I understand what it was going for. I think he was kind of just trying to play the range game a bit better, right? Like like trade with a more traditional projectile, longer range buttons. So you can kind of keep my arms, uh, arms length a little bit better, but uh, just not quite the same. I think it was worth a go for at least once. I have to remember, this is uh, the first monthly final that is double elimination. So you actually can't afford to try these other characters with less of a downside because you will have that safety net. However, this is for winners finals. This is for the first shot at guaranteed money. Minimum top three means you get at least 
100 bucks for uh hang on no wait if it's minimum it's 200 three, it's minimum 200 yeah that's true indeed it's for 100 bucks for fourth place so if you get winners oh, no, finals, no, is, it's is it least. 150 for third i think actually i think it's 200 for second i died well we can double check but i actually think you it's think with the amount split. of these that we've done that would have it like locked I, in but you've got me questioning myself do but I, too i'm good. pretty pretty sure i distinctly remember it just being 100 that separates you know every time but either way we'll find out later as omi does manage to get the reset and another low but no confirm but the overhead comes out so who cares he's gonna get the full combo and a comfortable round one and importantly corner position but as we've seen the nature of berserker is he has so many ways to side switch having him in the corner is kind of risky because he hits you once and you know the tables get turned don't they oh no i feel like you just need to not be there uh oh mixy mix at the edge where it looks to try and get maybe the anti break oh, I mean, th this is kind of exactly what you were just talking about right now the tables oh, yeah. have turned and it's Baraka Town. He's fishing for the crushing blow again. He's so naughty. Always look at the forbidden. There's oh, no, no reason it would That work. is the worst possible time to drop that. Throw counter. To get more mix. Oh, oh no. but he's blocked it. Omi, can he escape this corner? And try to pull it again. Oh no, match point now for ranks. And we did also just get a notification that it is $200 for third. So win winning this match gives you almost, like guaranteed almost as much as first place gets in a normal week. I mean, so I there's, told there's you. There's a decent chunk of money on the line for this I one. I told you and you doubted me. Hey man, I'm happy to be, to have the clarification. Oh no, we're punished. After the job is done now for ranks, another oh. throw. Feast, Baraka will feast. Oh, he's slicing them up. One more sequence. And I think Omi, the tech saving his skin, but can he do the comeback? Another tech says, get off me, Baraka, leave me alone. Oh, oh no. And there it is. Is that a flawless? That actually was a flawless victory. He could he do a friendship legitimate friendship. He, he could do a legitimate friendship Wait, if he wants to. If, if there's a friendship? It is the first, I think, legitimate friendship through no shadow of a doubt that we have seen. Oh my goodness. Ranks with that berserker baraka. Flawless, Flawless victory. The Yo, friendship. I actually, I actually didn't know that it came up and said Flawless at the side. No, you friendship. know why? You know why? Because we don't see proper friendships ever. True. But we got treated. We got treated to that today. The real friendship and, I mean, that's got to be, I would say icing on the cake, but it is a no pun intended because he threw the I cake. I mean, hang on, wait. That's a good point because we know... We know that it's a legitimate friendship because it can only be a legitimate friendship if it's a flawless, right? Because you just have to yeah. not take chip damage. Because you, 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 you didn't block. Don't take chip yeah. damage. I guess with the exception of characters that like put things on the floor that you can stand in that you can't block, like acid or whatever, but that's more specific. And that's also not super relevant because that was a really good set. Ranks, I think, Winners, that finals really guaranteed. Well. Yeah, winners, finals for ranks. This is why I, I said going into today, one of my predictions was ranks is a player to watch right now now he's been working on that raiden like he is a baraka main that we would only really see consistently suffer the most in matchups that I mean we just know that baraka really doesn't do very well in. not to say that he only loses because of matchups but like baraka is one of those characters that as solid as he is does have matchups that make him look considerably you know worse off and as a baraka main you do kind of need another character at least to kind of plug those matchups and now i think ranks now he's gone back to that raiden more has got exactly that and that is the the recipe for 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 getting a win i think i think that's a good opportunity for uh, for ranks to maybe get almost his first win maybe as uh, we see ranks moving through to winners finals where he will fight the winner of desarted and arn kratos in what will no doubt be another shang sung mirror match i think the only thing that might make this not a shang mirror is if arn kratos decides to, to bring out robocop but i don't know if that's what we're going to see from arn kratos today i think we are looking at monthly final there's way more money on the line than usual practically double arn kratos you know, the last tournament he was in, he got second. You know he's going to be hungry for another win. I don't know if we'll see the Robocop today. I mean, yeah, I, I thoroughly think that we're going to um, see Shang all the way for on Kratos. If it's a monthly final and it is the, the kind of the max amount of money that we're seeing here, he's going to want to try and go as far as he can and bracket. 
he is the world's greatest Shang Tsung player as far as I'm concerned. It makes sense. But on the note of Shang Tsung, I mean, these are the two premier Russian Shang Tsungs that are about to see go head to head. It will be a mirror. It won't be a complete mirror, I don't think. I do foresee... No, definitely not. I do thoroughly foresee Warlock versus Soul Eater because that's just what happens when these two players fight. Uh, you've got Arn Kratos, who goes Warlock mostly and Soul Eater if necessary. And then Desarted, who is Soul Eater all, as far as possible. And then Warlock, if there's a specific matchup where it helps him out. But even then, he still doesn't go Warlock in some matchups that you would think Warlock does well in because he has more faith and actually does better with Soul Eater. So uh, very much a specialist. And we'll just see how this one goes. Arn Kratos, as far as I'm concerned, is the favorite. Uh, just because of previous results. Clearly, the people that I mean, voted the last time believe... they played it was close, but Arn Kratos has won every time. You know, that, there's no getting around it. That That is the main point here. So I expect a good match, but Arn Kratos is definitely the one to watch, in my opinion. Was that the same intro as well? Those poor it dudes. Shao Kahn made me to replace you. Genius cannot be replaced. Round one. No, it cannot. Tell him, Shang, to Shang. Oh, and as we expected, Warlock versus Soul Eater, so not quite the mirror match. But expect a lot of this. The nature of Arn Kratos controlling as much of the screen space as possible, and then Desarted trying to make the jump distance count. You have to watch out for that Ermac lift from max distance. And no doubt Arn Kratos will be looking for it. It's why he's not so trigger happy on those projectiles at jump distance, because one Ermac lift, you know, and it can really set the whole thing in motion. The duck is. Oh, oh, well, you've seen that little knowledge as well, that quick duck. Yeah, we did. Of movement. course, he's a Shang player, he uses it. Of course, he knows how to duck it. Round two, fight. However, though, the one thing that I think really sets apart on Kratos for me from other Warlocks is just his ability to just pick up off everything with, like, seemingly max damage. It's like, that, that damage, like, it adds up. I feel like it's very easy to play Shang and just be like, look, I'm just going to cut everything short. I'm just going to do sparks into sparks, you know, and then that's about it. You know, ground eruption into itself or a single button. Whereas Kratos, I'm like, if, if there is extra damage to be squeezed out of a confirm, he will get it. And that little extra, like, 3 or 4%, however much he may have added, with the way he plays and oh. that kind of style, makes all the difference. I actually, although that is quite a slow move, you know, that whole back two string that Shang has, I actually do agree with staggering that first hit because you see that startup. You are going to immediately just sit and wait for the rest of the string, right? Because it's very over the top and you want to duck it and all that stuff. So if you stagger that single hit, I mean, surely they're not going to press after that. And here comes the started. Can he land the hit he's after? Oh, he fishes for it. You know what? I respect it. I respect it because if that Ermac lift worked, that was fatal blow and that was around. You know, he, he went for a big risk. But it would have been a big reward. Oh, yeah. meant to be. But game number one going to Arn Kratos. I mean, I, I actually feel like these matches are all going kind of exactly as we thought today. You know, it's, it's been a little bit weird. I feel like um, they've been good matches, but I feel like everyone's really shown up with their like absolute best. And that is when it's kind of like the easiest to kind of like predict. Not to say that it's like obvious what's going to happen, but you know what I'm saying, right? And, and this is why I like these monthly finals, because I feel like we see the absolute best from everyone, because this is the time to bring it. Especially when we now are like, in double elimination for the first time. Still, though, that was quite a one-sided game number one. Now, Desarted yeah. was game five last time they played, but I feel like Desarted had a bit of momentum at the start. Actually, you know, didn't he take the first two games? I'm pretty sure he was up 2-0. So I remember us that being was... very impressed, like, oh, you know, yeah, well, yeah. are we seeing a different a different shade of Desarted today? But so far, it's just, just Arn. It looked a little bit like Arn Kratos got taken by surprise. When, well, in the last time, things are a bit different now, but Lawless Block. Shut down whatever we can, but we are going to see another flawless block of that forward 2-4-2. Two, two. A very important string to kind of shut down for Shang. And now, uh, Maglift confirm, as always. Nice little chunk of damage. And it does look like Desarted. Kind of for the first time all series. Ooh, I'm not particularly convinced that was a hit confirm. But if it works, it works. Immediate jump. Maybe expecting oh, a no. jump in return. The second you go full screen, this is where it can all fall apart. I don't believe Smoke Shake can absorb all of those projectiles. I do think there are some moves that he can't. Shake. Uh, sm smoke will absorb the straight skull and ground eruption, but it will not stop um, Pulse Drop. I assume so. 
And it's, it's, it's hard to use it on reaction in this match. Because the only projectile that you can really react to every time is Quartz. But even then, like, oh, wait straight skill for max range. But it's, it's, it's the, the, the dynamic. Yeah, there you go. Because you notice he did that on prediction as well. Oh, but it picked up. Oh, the jump kick. Yeah. If, if you want to shake the eruption, you have to do it before you've seen it. It's like prediction, unfortunately. Which is what makes it such a risk. Looking to show a lot of respect on those plus frames. Does even another one. Flawless block. Again, that unblocked flawless block. I'm pretty sure that's like an option select almost for Kratos. He has a high success rate on it at the very, at the very least. Sorry. Ah, side switching throw. Desarted. Play time for Soul Eater in the corner. One thing Soul Eater will have over Warlock is corner presence. That's a counter hit. Right, if he's going to win the round, this is one hell of a way to start it. A little bit of a heal here and there. If he gets anything into... Oh, Magnet's empty jump low. I think he's aware of the jump in tech. And he's... The next layer that comes from it. Turn stealing down one. Expects maybe some sort of jump. More down one. Down one. Oh, I love that. That down one to check that forward dash from Kratos. The side not letting him move in for free. Oh, hang on a minute. Me jump in. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, and there is the low. The Sartid finds it. I feel like he really had to fight for that one. He had the life lead the whole time, but Kratos was just finding ways of just getting a little bit of damage back. That Ermac suit hits different. That Ermac costume hits different today, considering what I'm currently wearing. True. I wish I could wear the mask all day, but I cannot commentate in it, which is why we took it off. <laughs> Live for it, die by it, but you know, still got a job to do here, folks. But in this when next match, doesn't win. Yeah. If I had like a little microphone that I could like clip on the inside, that'd be next level. But I mean, I'm only at home, and I so <laughs> I don't have that technology. Oh, I'm all disowning. Yeah, Working no real good. Yeah, yeah. I guess the knockdown too. The important thing about the charge, just keeping Desarted exactly where we want him, and he has the range. Ah, doesn't let it go. No need to risk it. Oh, oh and there it is again. The ground eruption. And again, I feel like this is how these matches are just going down almost every time we see them, right? Where Desarted, like, he, he puts up a fight, but just comes down to not having the life lead, having to advance through. Because here's the thing about this specific variation matchup. Solita definitely has the tools, but Solita is not going to be doing a lot from full screen. You know, your full screen options are going to be limited to straight skull if you want to trade with literally anything. And the only thing you're going to do is trade evenly with another straight skull. And even then, if it gets amped, you're in trouble. You'll lose the trade to everything else. And Shake, which you can only do on reaction to Skull at long range. You have to do it on prediction against Ground Eruption, and it just loses to Corpse Drop. So this is a variation that solely is going to want to be point blank all the time, but it's just that just you, you're not going to be against Warlock. You know what I mean? Like, you will have to play the long range game against Warlock. It's just what happens in the matchup. There will come a time that you're going to be at distance, and you have to work your way in through the Eruption, through the, the Corpse, whatever it is. And that is the situation that Soul Eater is going to suffer the most in. And it's the same it's... matchup all the way through. And this is what we expected. I do wonder if we're going to see the turnaround from Desarted. A, a reverse three-game sweep is what he has to do now. And I feel like that is a tall order to ask of anybody. Let alone someone that has kind of consistently had your number in tournament. Oh, Desarted going yeah, for the max is. range reptile slide. That's the crushing blow. Thank you very much. That does give However, a likely. The question is for how long. That's what I wonder. Ow! With punishes the shake. And we're going to continue to play this long range game. Long range is where Arn Kratos will be at his most powerful. But this is that next layer. Both players, they, they know of each other's plus frames, right? And they respect it. Now that instant where Desarted tried to jump out instead. Oh, he becomes Soul Eater himself. Yeah, I'm you actually quite surprised that's the first time we've seen that. Normally in the Shang mirror, you see a lot of morphing. You know what I... I Shang Tsung. Oh! Oof! You know what I love, actually, about... In fact, by the way, match point on Kratos. When he became solely to the first thing he did was meaty with forward two. I think he was looking for a counter hit on that just to take the crushing blow. Because you know, he wouldn't have had no reason to not use it if it connected. Free damage. Oh! Speaking, speaking of free damage! Of crushing blow, yeah. Oh, no breakaway. The decides is holding all this. Max range on Kratos. The dash into 1 1 2 plus frames. Straight skull in case they try and challenge it or jump perhaps. Manages to catch the anti air in the middle of it. No tech, so a reverse 
throw. Good stuff for Desartid. Needs to really make this corner pressure count. I do think empty jump into button. That is one of the ways that you can get around that release block tech that Arncratos does. But he's just got the side switch. Just a raw jump out. Uh-oh. Oh, he's enforcing the pressure. Flawless block. Oh, that but he needs more than that. Block. Oh, the oh. chase down. Boom. And the fatal blow. There we go. Desartid. That is exactly precisely what he needed to get back into this game. It came at a heavy cost. You know, that's a crushing blow and a fatal blow. So those two one-time resources are now gone, but absolutely worth it. To be honest, Desartid, he is against the ropes in every way you can be. Match point down against him. Three games ahead he needs to take. I mean, just get some momentum back, win the round, be done with it. Although we find himself in a situation again. This has been the range he has struggled at this entire set, but a drop combo. A rare execution error from Kratos gives uh, a side away back in, maybe. But no, he finds himself back here already again. Almost half life to just projectiles. There it is, the shake. The back roll. I like it. That, that, that's Kratos. he's playing careful. The back roll was the, 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 the least risk he could do there. When you get hit by that shake, and you know that mind game is there of the amp. The crushing blow. Speaking of which, another crushing blow comes through. Desartid, so Desartid. close, actually, that being able to get a game game on the yeah. board. This is going well for Desartid. He's very close. He's winning. <gasps> oh, no. But that cost defensive bar. Hang on a minute. That might be defensive bar that he needed. Oh, he's dead. Oh, no. He's dead. Oh, no. Come he off. did a fatal blow. Amplify. And the one more mix plus frames. The max distance for you. He spent the crushing blow in round one. Up three. Was... The only thing on Kratos could do to prevent that guaranteed morph into punish. The up three was very intelligently used there by on Kratos, who has moved himself into yet another winner's finals where he'll be facing off against ranks. Probably Shang Tsung versus, I'd like to say Raiden, but I mean, we'll just see. We'll see what matchup probably, he prefer. It probably will be, because I know Shang Tsung is one of those characters that... Bracket doesn't like dealing with very much. However, to be fair, Berserker probably can blade charge uh, ground eruption if you flawless block it. So I imagine you could do that. The question is, would you rather do that or just teleport into 30%? You know, I think that's going to be the dynamic of what to expect. But I will say, you know, not to toot my own horn a little bit, but this is exactly what I called. I said that Arn Kratos is a favorite to win and ranks with his, uh, you know, kind of refined character pairing of Baraka and Raiden has uh, got a really good chance to go far as well. And behold, our winners finals is exactly that. Now, I actually think that this is the best kind of winners finals we could have had. Because Arn Kratos, as far as I'm concerned, was like a lock for winners finals. And it was a question of who else in the bracket might have that chance to really knock him off that perch. Because we, you know, we talk a lot about how dominant Arn Kratos is. He hasn't won every single week he's entered. He's just the worst he's ever placed is second, you know? He's won most of the events he's, he's been here to play. But when he hasn't won, it's been literally second place. So, you know pretty high standard he set for himself but looking at who else was here i do firmly believe that um that ranks was 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 the best one poised to kind of knock on kratos off at this moment but we'll find out when this winners finals commences a little bit of an update off stream mercer we saw already has been able to eliminate aso de Mato 3-0 and orp taking it 3-1 over macaran so that's all we'll be seeing for Scarlet today, presumably, as it does set up a couple of interesting next round games in the loser's bracket, but we won't be seeing those. We'll be going down to loser's bracket for winner's top four. But before we do that, we have the all important winner's finals to get started. So we're gonna to go to a break while we set that up. But before we go to a break, I wanna remind those of you watching again, that you can enter the open series tournaments as well. If you have a PS4 and a connection to the internet, it could not be simpler. Go to compete playstation.com all the information you need is right there or you know if you are watching on twitch or youtube wherever it is the information underneath where you're watching right now uh, is going to be uh, all good to follow and we'd love to see you playing in these tournaments in the future but for now we are going to go to another few minute break while we get winners finals ready it's going to be ranks it's going to be on kratos it's going to be a good match we'll see you in a few minutes The PS4 Tournament's Open Series has been full of fantastic finishes, killer combos, and a friendship or two. Let's go, friendship! That's what I'm talking about! We've seen promising new players and household names continue to dominate. This cannot be a full life comeback, surely, surely not. not. I refuse to believe it. Oh, oh. Marco, the reverse sweep! Do not miss a single moment of the PS4 Tournament's Open Series. PlayStation.
This is the Mortal Kombat character breakdown for Johnny Cage. One of the strongest characters in the game for a number of reasons. A character with two immensely strong tournament variations. Showstopper boasts the largest comeback potential of almost any character, and it's all thanks to the Shades Toss crushing blow and the amplified camera. Both combined lead to devastating combo damage that allow this Hollywood hero to never be counted out, no matter the life deficit. Outtake is a little more fundamental, with arcing force balls that provide dangerous keep away, and the rising star for safety and chip damage. A tool set that can deal real damage anywhere on screen, and can cover your back in a variety of matchups. This character universally boasts great range, combo damage, and pressure. Master all of these together, and Johnny Cage will certainly be a reliable tournament pick. This is the Mortal Kombat character breakdown, The Joker. The clown prince of Gotham sports range on his normal attacks, meterless combo potential, and big damage across the board. Combine his lethal base moveset with three different variations that expand on this massively, and you're left with a character that has a tool for every occasion. The Clown Prince variation brings range and keep away thanks to a low projectile. Amplify this for high damage, and additionally, providing unbreakable damage to really save your skin. Ace of Knaves is tricky and uses Jumping Jester and Jack in the Box. These tools provide scary knockdown pressure and trap the opponent into unfavorable positions. Finally, Madman is damage and safety through and through. Great for newcomers and not very complicated, also boasting the most streamlined combo game around the launching properties of Kapow, which Madman has instead of the Bird Boy Beatdown special. Universally, his fatal blow can be cancelled out of, and even has a throw-crushing blow tied to its cooldown. This alone gives the Joker the most dangerous fatal blow in all of MK11, often a game-changer. Fans of the Joker will feel right at home, terrorizing the competition. This is the Mortal Kombat character breakdown, Kung Lao. A master of the air and perfect for those looking to bring unpredictability to the competitive table. When it comes to his variations, you have some interesting options. Lotus Fist utilizes the orbiting hat, highly resource intensive, but provides block pressure and incredible combo damage. This variation makes almost any combo string a viable option on block, as the sheer threat of using orbiting hat at any moment will make opponents very uncomfortable on defense. Alternatively, the hat tricks variation slows things down and forces the opponent to play more grounded. The Z-Hat does massive chip by itself, and when amplified, provides faster recovery for the player using it, on top of covering a lot of screen space. Kung Lao has amazing jump attacks, a spin for meterless combo damage, and a lethal throw game. Combine this with variations that expand his utility greatly, and you have a fantastic character on your hands. This is the Mortal Kombat character breakdown, Sindel. The Adenian Queen is back and more fearsome than ever. Her variations are strong, but her most important attacks are actually what she has by default, and not variation specific. She boasts incredible range. Her scream is arguably her most powerful tool due to the crushing blow attached. This is something your opponents will have to play around as once they get hit by it, they will take severe damage, especially if she has her fatal blow ready. Her towards back kick is a key attack that can cause a lot of headaches for her opponent. This cartwheel leads to a string that is completely safe and resets you back to mid-screen distance, allowing her to play an effective hit-and-run style. In addition, her towards back punch leads to a long-reaching overhead string, and her away back punch is a low attack that launches the opponent in the air. This mix-up keeps opponents on their toes, which can be easier said than done when combined with her other distance options. With range on her side, Sindel can absolutely be a force to be reckoned with. Low damage at first glance, but can explode life bars with the right resources loaded.
We are just about to jump into our winners finals here for the PS4 tournament's MK11 Open Series Monthly Finals. Well, my name is Ketchup, joined by Mustard, and it's going to be Ranks versus Arn Kratos. So, it's either going to be Baraka or Raiden versus the Shang Tsung, most likely. I do think Raiden makes the most sense if we just look at the matchup on paper. But, I mean, Ranks' as Berserker today has been doing incredible things up against Omi, for example. So, who knows, honestly? I think it's going to be a question of whether Ranks wants to be able to... I, again, kind of have the safety close range because safety is a big thing against Shang Tsung. Because like, even though Warlock doesn't hit you super hard, getting hit by Warlock means you're going full screen, and that's not where you're going to want to be if you're Baraka. Baraka's like, you know, default Blade Spark. It's not going to be a terrible trading tool, but it is going to lose to Corpse Drop. He is, in theory, like I I don't know for sure, but I'm I'm like 99% sure that you can flawless block uh, ground eruption and reversal blade charge punish it, which you know could be a big deal because blade charge is like was it 120 damage? Like it's not it's it's not a tiny amount by any means. Um, and then when you are point blank, you're gonna have safer options, right? Because someone like Ankratos, who's very good at flawless blocking, you are gonna have options like you know the, the leg kebab, you're gonna have the chip, whatever it is, right? And then Baraka's corner game, which is always really good. Raiden is going to be less less fuss, but a bit more unsafe, where you are going to be able to like teleport right as he ground eruptions, right as he throws a corpse, and get a full standing punish. But when you are blocking, you have to make sure you are very prepared for what your follow-ups are, because you know on Kratos is going to be ready to duck, he's going to be ready to OS anything that can be OS'd in the matchup, which is normally something quite difficult, but he's going to be able to do it. Ugh, I don't know. I think the bigger reward up front is Raiden, but the safer pick is still going to be Berserker. I think it depends completely on what Ranks thinks is the, the right choice here. Because you know you're fighting one of the best Warlocks, if not the best Warlock player in the world. So, you know, it's uh, quite a decision to make. As we go into character select, we'll find out. It's Warlock from Iron Kratos, no surprise. Now, what do we see from Ranks? There are other characters Ranks has also been able to play competitively. The question is, we see the biggest success from Raiden or Baraka. Is he even thinking about a Jackie here? Does Ranks play a Jackie? We do know that Arn Kratos doesn't I've like not fighting seen, Jackie. I've not seen Ranks play Jackie, so I don't know. He's equipped a skin, so that means he plays it. It's the, it's the, the rule of the land. Really? Avalanche! So Ranks oh, plays a whole on. bunch of no. different characters. Wait, so yes, Sub-Zero is seen to be a good pick against Shang Tsung. Because like pretty much every projectile loses to Ice Ball. But this is Soul Eater, not Warlock, though. So there is going to no, be. He, he did pick Warlock. Did he? Did he deselect? He must have deselected when he saw Sub Zero. Maybe. I mean, he was completely within his right to. Oh, he knows there's going to be a solid round start there. Now, what ranks should uh, have man. done is hidden cursor. The fact that he wanted to have this kind of like other pick and then on Kratos saw the pick and changed to Soul Eater, like this is precisely what Hidden Cursor is for. Because this is a variation matchup dynamic that changes completely. Have like Sub-Zero versus Warlock wins every trade, right? You can throw as many Ice Balls as you want. You're going to win the trade. Even if you get hit by something, it doesn't matter. Soul Eater, you can't throw Ice Balls in the, uh, ice balls in the neutral because of the shape. This absolutely should have been a Hidden Cursor as far as I'm concerned. Oh, and a whiff punish on the forward four. So crispy on Kratos. He does drop the combo, but you know what? He did the cool thing. Here comes the mix. Creeping Ice tries to up two. Already hitting the floor, though. Ranks looking for an opportunity to fight back here. Arctic Trap. Not really going to do much from that distance. Yeah, on Kratos. Happy to stay far away. No reason to push in just yet. That's to confirm. Wonderful tech. It did enough damage to Ranks to give him Fatal Blow, though. So there is an element here. Oh, and that's the knockdown. Knows the break's going to happen. I'm going to be honest. Although that was the round, I was kind of expecting Arn Kratos to wake up Fatal Blow because he hasn't done it all day. This is a new man. He's turning over a new leaf. No, no more yeah, wake no, up We'll supers. see it. Nah, we'll see it. At least once. We'll see it. Mark my words. It wouldn't be an Arn Kratos what, game. What, what if the only time we see it is like win the tournament? Can you imagine that? Imagine the drama. Oh, bit of a drop there for ranks, potentially. I'm not particularly convinced that was on purpose, because even if he broke, I think he would have been safe. Uh-oh. Side switch. Looks for Ermac to maybe get the extra piece of damage there. Oh, the dash under. Yes, indeed. 
Ah, here comes the Ermac. Full combo. Jump in. Squeeze out every inch of damage possible. Trip guard into overhead. Not a counter, though. Just on landing. Lovely tech for our Kratos, but a confirm for ranks. Oh, oh, you were yeah. saying. You told were saying. You. Well, that's not going to win, but it is going to get the life lead. Any freeze at the Fatal Blow will do it. And now Arn Kratos pushing in. Micro Duck. Oh! Amp. He oh gets the my round. goodness. He found it. He found it. I don't know how he found that one, to be honest with you. But the important thing, actually, is that Arn Kratos, the Fatal Blow, is gone. Normally, you wouldn't think it'd be such a big deal for Shang, but Uncreatos hits it more than any any Shang player should have a right to, honestly. That is not a good fatal blow. Yeah, he hits it on wake up all the time. I do not understand it. But I don't have to understand it, I just have to respect it. Oh, Absolutely. Now, here comes the Ermac confirm. The break was already used. The corner position still belongs to ranks, and the raw jump in. That's an Ermac lift. Bang, bang, uppercut. Yes. Oh, we are and that's it. all sorts of buttons now. Just got the bar back too. That might be it. No, not quite. Oh, and the anti cross up with the swiftness and the brutality. Let's go. Brutality. The splits on Kratos. Game number one. He had to fight for it. Absolutely. But I mean, the result is still the same on Kratos. Now, I, I, I said it at the start of the match and I, I hate to be that kind of like, you know, a, a bring a downer on things. But I feel like ranks... He made the exact right decision by trying out a Sub-Zero here because we know he plays a lot of characters and has played a number of characters over time. But to do so without hiding his cursor, I feel like almost lost him a potential match. Because we saw that Warlock was picked by Arn Kratos. He, he picked Warlock. And then when he saw the Sub-Zero, he deselected and went to Solia. That is literally what Hidden Cursor is for. If Ranks wanted to pick Sub-Zero as a bit of a, a spanner in the works to kind of throw off... Like, because the thing is, I would never have expected a Sub-Zero from Ranks. Not there, not at all. And I'm pretty sure that Arn Kratos wouldn't have either. So if he hit his cursor and then went Sub-Zero, there is a good chance that would have been Warlock versus Avalanche, which is actually a matchup that Sub-Zero does really well in. Because you can't throw projectiles ever. Because you, you will lose the trade. Nine times out of ten, you will lose the trade. You're going to get put in the corner. You're going to get out damage. It really shuts down what you can do, right? It's... It's, it's, it's a lot harder. It might not be a bad matchup, per se, but it definitely is a lot more tough. But because we saw on Kratos, he, he was able to, 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 to see it and select Solia. That was a potential one match. Not there for ranks. So the entire dynamic of changing just wasn't in his favor, but it should have been. There's that down one instantly. Throw tech. Ranks and his throw techs. The throw techs from both sides, and you know it's going to be good. Oh. This level! Wow! That was some strange counter poke, but it works. And the flawless block to shut down some of that chip from the creeping ice. Forward throw. Here comes more pressure. Sub-Zero. Double digit plus frames on that forward throw. And by all accounts, should be able to take this round. And he will with a clean little jump kick. Ranks taking the first round here. And Arn Kratos absolutely can bring this one back. You know we can. People definitely favored him too. Reaction. Lovely reaction. There it is. Oh, close enough. Ah. He is. I like how he acknowledged there wasn't a counter hit, so he did the launch. Always good. And in the corner, you're going to get more damage anyway without it. So here comes Ermac again. Oh, Solia in the corner. These combos are so clean. Really good damage as well. Like one bar, like 330. That definitely is like, by this game standards, that's pretty much better than average. Oh, he tried to go for optimal, but didn't quite get it. Still, damage is damage. I'm Kratos having quite a lead. Oh, we're punished! <laughs> that was so perfect. So perfect. And the optimal, too. Oh, my goodness. You know like what? Kratos. We're punished That's with a, a lift. That's a bit of a classic exchange as well. Sub-Zero creates an obstacle and Ermac uses the choke or whatever it is to go through. Seen that in MK9s or that MKX. See it in MK11 in just a little bit of a different way. I imagine we'll see it longer in the future. Oh, oh and again, on Kratos tried it again, but this time way too close. Oh, the OS... Jump kick's gonna do the job. Empty oh, jump meaty. low. And more. Oh, we went for optimal, we dropped it. Another. I'm not sure what Arn Kratos is doing right here. He's with punishes on the grabs. Normally he's very on point, but he has not been so far. Now, is that the first EX slide? Oh, trip, trip guard. guard. Beautiful range. 
That was surgical far on Kratos, and he ends in a side switch just to give us that mid-screen to work with. Avoid the corner at all costs. You don't want to give Sub-Zero that position. Scary stuff indeed. Tries to go for the reset. Another one, but too far away. Oh, Mac left doesn't quite do it. He's dead. Yep, there it is. 2-0 on Kratos. Again, I feel like it's shades of game number one. We keep going down to round three, but it does not matter. It's Down's just the element of Arn Kratos. That's huge. He's just incredibly composed. And above all else, you know, we talk about the defense. It's decision-making for Arn Kratos. Some of the stuff you look at and you go, why would he down two there? Why would he jump there? But it works. The reality is it works because he's looked so, no, at the it's, situation. It's, 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 it's one of the and things And he's just that... making the choice. And it's always right. You know, There's just something about how this guy makes his decisions that his choice always seems to be the right choice, doesn't it? Well, I, I definitely think that that's a big part of, your, again, just knowing that, right, I'm going to jump now because you're going to do this and boom. The only element to that point that we're not seeing is he's ducking a lot of throws and not punishing them properly. But that's like the only real mistake we're seeing him make. And even then, he's still up to zero. You know what I mean? That's, that, that's the point. That's like the only mistake he's making. But now Ranks, unfortunately, finds himself at a two-game deficit. The sub-zero pick did not work in game number one or two. But the problem is, they were two round threes, so... I mean, could we say? I mean, they didn't work on in terms of the score, but the matches. But in the matches we saw, Sub Zero seems to not be a bad idea either. So it's kind of like, yeah, he was definitely considering it. It's like, do I change character, even though I'm down two games, or do I stick with Sub Zero knowing it's round three? Because they were two close games. Don't get me wrong. They were close two matches. Like the sc the, well, the score line doesn't reflect how close these matches have been, honestly. We look at the future matches too. The Sub-Zero pick, it does seem quite a good one because you look at the long game. You know, we look at Sub-Zero versus Warlock can fight. Sub-Zero versus Soul Eater can fight. You know, if you look at ranks and ranks, if you were to go Baraka here and win game one, again, you know, his first game against Soul Eater, and then he has to fight Warlock, it's like, okay, well, <laughs> this final game is going to be almost impossible for me, but at least Avalanche is able to fight both variations. So he's, he's kind of got the future in mind with this, but the future might be short-lived at this rate. Arn Kratos working on a three to zero. He went into this as the favorite, especially if he has the Shang Tsung. He's playing no games this week. No experiments, no messages to send. The only message I want to send is, I'm the best Shang and I'm going to prove it. Ah, look at this destruction on yeah, Kratos. This has been a one-sided round. Oh, oh, that was interesting. He crouched the jump in and then trip guarded with the flames. I mean, that's just, oh, you couldn't make that up. Imbecile. Now, you called him an imbecile. He just reacted to a, he just reacted to an ice ball with shake, Don't killed throw. man, and then just said, you imbecile. Don't throw that's an ice rude, ball. rude, dude. Don't throw an ice ball. He's looking for the crushing blow. He's so cheeky. We all knew it. Oh no. We all knew okay, it. that's not a good sign. Okay. Too far away. The creeping ice isn't going to do anything. With Parnish. Ranks trying to throw the kitchen sink at him and no one home just yet. Expects maybe the gap. Oh no. Ranks has to break. With Punish Ermac. I mean, that's as good as it's going to get so far. Side switch. We need to get some sort of momentum here because Ranks is in big trouble. Punish. No. Can't. All right. Here we go. What's it going to be? The flawless, flawless block to shut down the chip. So good. Aren't Kratos' flawless blocks mustard? Why are they so good? A lot of practice, time, and effort. Now, four. That could have been huge. Ooh. It was good for ranks to block on landing. Oh, no, but it won't matter. The confirm on Kratos finds the magic fatal blow, and that is absolutely going to do enough to kill on Kratos. Walk in his way 3 0 to grand finals on the winner's side of this October monthly final. I mean, are, are either of us surprised, really? Arn Kratos is just that. He is just that guy at this point for Europe. You know, he is that most dominant force. When he's running all Shang, that is the when number he's had most one. consistency. Yes, indeed. And of course, you know, Ranks definitely 
not even though again it was a 3-0 sure but ranks didn't just get obliterated those first two games they did go down to close round threes you know kind of the epitome of one of those sets where you know this is like we've said before the score line doesn't really reflect how the matches actually went but what matters is the score line at the end of the day as Arn kratos is now going to be sitting pretty guaranteed at least second place so that is a good payday if you are on kratos as ranks the avalanche pick i definitely think it was worth a try i still stand true to my earlier analysis of the hidden cursor in my opinion should have been what was done at the start but you know what it is what it is you know like there's no use dwelling on it, dwelling on it too much because ranks is definitely still in this he just loses finals now so you know minimum third place but he's still one game away from getting that run back and ranks is still having a good day so we could absolutely see the repeat matchup come through in losers finals but we are a little bit away from finding that out as we do have now a uh, losers top four match to go to to find out who is going to get through to that losers finals to face ranks for the right to get to our kratos again quite the obstacle course i think because ranks and on kratos they've been the most dominant players of the day i think for sure but with the losers bracket action about to take place so this is elimination territory some people might only tune into the monthly finals and if this is your first time seeing a oh if this is your first time seeing a double elimination i mean the losers bracket is your last tournament lifeline basically and as we can see three two omi defeated orp and Mercer defeated Desarted. So they fought in round one. They're gonna fight again. This time it's elimination territory and for a shot at losers finals, Mercer and Omi, Scorpion versus Sub-Zero. I mean, as soon as they're ready, we'll get straight into it. I can see Mercer's already in the lobby, so we should actually get into this matchup quite quickly. And it's been a nice little mixed bag. Haven't seen Mercer in some time. Haven't seen Omi in a fair old while. And he's definitely giving us a uh, better showing well, now than when we, we first yeah, saw him. With We've only seen Omi once in the past, and he had a rough time. Um, if, if memory serves, I actually think it was a um, it was it, it was a monthly final, but it was single limb, so we we only had the chance to see him the one time, and that was about it. But um, no, it's 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 definitely a match I'm looking forward to seeing the run back of. I think, given the fact that this is the first time we've seen a double elimination monthly final, seeing the same thing happen. You know, the same matchup happened twice. It's the first time I've actually had the chance to see this uh, in the monthly final. So we're going to see if the, the kind of tried and true adaptation of the Open Series works out. Because how many times have we seen players, they'll duke it out and winners, they'll get the run back, and it's a completely different set. I feel like that happens way more than it doesn't. But now, interestingly, the people favoured Mercer, even though Omi kind of dominantly defeated Mercer when they fought in winners. So... Again, I think it just comes down more to the fact that Mercer has a lot of supporters out there that will believe in him no matter what. And we'll see if Omi can go for the potential double elimination or whether it's going to be that one-to-one, -one, you know? And it is, remember everyone, fighting for that loser's final spot. All right. Okay, good start again. Oh, wow, hang on, we're seeing a costume change. Omi, he's gone the white as opposed to like the black before. He's combat Omi season one skin. You, you mean Mercer, right? Oh yeah, I, I mean Mercer. I was looking at Omi's <laughs> name at the time. <laughs> Omi hasn't changed anything at all. What are you talking about? Anyway, here comes the full combo. And we're going to end things. Knock down. I mean, simple BMB. And you know what, Mustard? It looks like we're kind of picking up where we left off, aren't we? Pretty much. Unfortunately for uh, Omi, potentially. That's <laughs> the last set going to that three. Well, the pickup. Oh, we didn't go for the ice ball. I wonder if he's expecting a breakaway. Oh, and that's the first round here for Mercer. Mercer would like an opportunity for revenge, I think. Round two, fight. I mean, Mercer, we haven't seen him in a while either, but easy to forget just how impactful his scorpion has been on the open series right because we haven't seen him in about i mean maybe like a month i'd say at this point doesn't mean he's not still playing it's like i said he keeps getting really close to the finals just not not quite there but we know he's capable mercer is himself as well another open series winner you know he has won a weekly before oh but the wake up uppercut there's only so long it can be your turn oh mercer He's such a beast of just getting that teleport as you try and advance in the corner. Definitely tried to interrupt another flawless block, but Omi no meter to punish it this time. Has no choice but to just concede the teleport. Mercer gets the crushing blow. Is he going to get this first game at this rate? Oh, oh and there's the down one. The perfect finish. 
In that classic pose. I actually love the amount of like classic win poses that are in MK11. They're all so good. I mean, there's a lot of references to old stuff in this game. And, there you know, always is, though, isn't there? It's, it's one of the best things that Netherrealm do. It's like that, that kind of paying homage. Although, you know what I have actually not really seen in a long time? is I haven't seen any Cabal players running the MK3 Cabal mask. Yeah. I actually don't think... I can't remember the last time I actually saw that in game. Well, a lot of the Cabal players that we have in the community these days Six, played Cabal in Mortal Kombat 9, so their nostalgic Cabal mask is the MK9 one, like Kerbo, yeah. like Kerbalicious. He always wears the MK9 Cabal mask because that was his, you know, breakout MK title, wasn't it? A lot of the, uh, you know, the old school Cabal players of MK3 and Trilogy and all that stuff, um, they don't really compete in MK11, you know? And if they do, they don't really play Cabal, <laughs> if I recall. But Rio, Rio doesn't play Cabal, right? No, he plays I, everyone. I, I, the whole I cast. Feel like, I feel like the only like Cabal player from nine that I'm still playing, uh, still seeing playing Cabal now is Kerbo. Yeah, Kerbo. And, and that is absolutely, and, and that is absolutely, you know, why Kerbo is playing Cabal. Like a hundred percent. I wonder if he's playing playing MK9 just to kind of change his mind. I think he was like a Liu Kang through and through, but oh no, Almus has gone back. To the original. But oh, I, I think you definitely called it. Like, this, this definitely looks like we're kind of just picking up where we left off and when It's the same kind of thing, right? Those, like, neutral jumps. Mercer, I think this is just how he plays against Sub-Zero, right? He doesn't want to just sit there and, and kind of be forced to play around that kind of, like, Sub-Zero triple mix-up. You know, the, the throw, the overhead low, whatever. I think you just... The same way we saw Decide fight against Orp, I think, where it's less about sitting there and blocking and just, like, going, well, I'm in a situation that blocking isn't 100%, so why should I... Especially when it's working for him as well, right? Ain't broke, etc. Oh, but again, the commitment needs to punish hard. When Mercer's going this ham with uh, the teleport shenanigans, but he does overcommit too oh, much. You have to make him pay. Yes, but he does. That's not for the kill, but it'll be close. Almost one percent off. Oh, but the me down one. But when the opponent is that weak, I mean, that's always a good shout. So many players now, they their pressure is so single button focused because of the wake up roll. You don't want to overcommit, especially when your back's near the corner or anywhere near it. Tries to get the whip punish into teleport. It's going to get fully punished for his troubles as oh my. I was going to say the wrong name there. Oh me. My bad. Oh my. <laughs> Don't worry, I, I respect the attempt to, to, to finish it. I, I mean, I tried to salvage it and I just made it 10 times worse. Sorry, Omi. Anyway, as he manages to push in, I definitely think Whip Mercer may be expecting. Ooh, He's just playing worries. like a man possessed right now. Uh oh. All right, reset. There's the block on the low Ooh, counter. Okay, now that is the Omi we saw a lot more in winner's bracket. No, but too eager is Mercer. You know, I actually kind of like that fatal blow because Omi, he's been doing a lot of these like clutch flawless blocks um, the entire day. And I feel like w when he's had those rounds that he really Sorry. is just like getting them in the best moment, that's when he's having the most success. So I think like seeing that he's going for these force blocks, immediately trying to steal the momentum away with a fatal blow. Because if that fatal blow worked, I wonder if that almost would have crushed Omi. Like, okay, you're, you're now going back to this flawless block style. I'm now going to stop the momentum straight away with a fatal blow, and now you're in trouble again. Reactionary Another block fun. on the back three, too. Uh-huh. Escape failed. failed. That's not good. Yeah, gave it a good go to try and escape, but Scorpion in aftermath now. Crushing blow throw on both directions. Gets the tech, and that is going to shut down the crushing blow. So a very impactful time to tech right there. Oh. That's I might try to beat that. Air to air. You know that air to air would have been a teleport for Mercer, so... A trade that favors Omi, I think. And that's just a roar of raw deep freeze. Uh-oh. I think that was a bit of a combo drop there because that would have been one, two, four crushing blow. You know it would. Oh, dear. Escape failed again. Making the grab versus strike game so scary. He punishes. Now, can he pull it off? Oh, final. Hang on a minute. They're down four. Oh, oh no, he's done. delay. Oh, dearie me. Mercer manages to find it. I feel like that was looking really good for Omi, but the second we saw that final escape fail with like almost back to back, that was when I think it got a lot more dangerous. Mercer 2-0. Again, another close game, but close matches don't always mean for a close scoreline. Mercer is one game away from getting that match against 
ranks in the losers final and to be honest i actually think if mercer can pull this off he actually might have a really good chance to do well because he has defeated on kratos in the past in open series and scorpion i i, I feel like i on mercer's best day there aren't many players that he can't at least kind of go toe to toe with and yeah. he's looking like this could be one of those days you know like it didn't go amazingly well for him um all through today but I think he's going to be we disappointed too because Omi had the, he had the corner combo, uh, and I, I believe he still had the one two four KB. I don't think he'd spent it before, I don't and think so, he no. just he, had it. He, he dropped it. He just dropped the combo that would have done so much damage and put him. Not only that, I don't think the combo would have killed, but it would have left him weak enough that the grab was a threat and any button was a threat. That one drop cost him the entire sequence and ultimately the whole game. It's the worst kind of combo drop, one that loses you the whole match. And he has to keep his mind in the game because that can cause everything to fall apart mentally as we go into the rest. Well, especially for, like, like the way Omi won the winner's side match where it was done like via you know, really like, sick decision making, you know, that, 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 that final reset. Like he was definitely feeling himself, right? But I feel like the momentum we saw at the end of the winner's set is kind of not there anymore. I feel like it's completely swapped, if anything. And now Mercer is clearly like steamrolling ahead. And there we go. Oh, he went for optimal, but dropped it. No punish, though. A rare miss from Mercer. Clean anti -air. Oh, that was gorgeous. Oh. Yeah, I didn't want to... I, I respect that. I didn't want to finish it and overextend to die to a breakaway, maybe. Still well, anything down on life. Oh, the whiff punish. I did wonder how long it would be before we started seeing Mercer go for back jumps. And All right. Big boot. Oh, oh no, not again. Yeah, fool me once. Shame on me. No, shame on you. I got that wrong. You know what I mean? The fool me once quote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that that thing that some people say, match point for Mercer, is another thing that we say. There's a flawless block. Something Omi's been doing a great job of all day long, but now has to bring Ooh. up his A game. Otherwise, Mercer's going to run away with this 3-0 swift revenge, it would be. And, yeah, and the anti teleport. It Love it. Luckily, one of the better anti airs of the game, honestly. And there it is again, the jump Self. back. Oh. Mercer's definitely twigged on the Omi. He's a big fan of the big boot. Oh, that would have been death. That would have been death, but instead he is dead. Fatal blow. There we go, Mercer. A bittersweet end to that round. Mercer had the hit that could have ended it all, but wasn't able to pick up the standing one. Omi responds in kind. Fatal blow spent, sure, but again, you are back to the wall. You have three games to win. Uh, win. Spend the resources. Absolutely worth doing there. Now it's a still match point, you know, revenge point for Mercer, the breakaway. Clutch breakaway for Omi to really save as much bar as he can, but he can't punish the forward 3-4 because he just used his defensive bar. Thankfully, he gets himself an overhead for his troubles. Good damage. Mercer holding on to his meter. Wants to, I mean, he, you can see it right there. Saving the bar, concede the damage, take the inevitable uppercut, but then you've got meter to escape the corner, and now he's escaped the corner. He's putting the pressure on himself. Can he finish the job? That is the question. Plus frames. He's down one. He's expecting Mercer to challenge so much. Now he knows who he's against. That's right in the chin. Oh dear. Oh, optimal. Here it comes. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, no, he drops it. That would have done so much. Oh no. Oh no. Not off a drop. Surely not, not two off games a drop. in a row. Not two games in a row, Mercer. That would be hell Ooh. on earth. No, but he got the he air. Sorry, right, salvage, salvage. He got the air to air. If he lost the air to air, it'd be over. That one exchange made the difference between whether us being over now, but not going to happen, Omi. Man, just to get it. That would have been a tragic way for Omi to lose that set if he dropped that KB combo. Because that would have been like a lot of damage as well. Because you've done, wait, what was it? It was uppercut crushing blow, only a standing three into ice ball. Like that would have been like minimal scaling for sure. That would have been an easy like 500 damage minimum, I bet. Which is exactly why I went for it, right? It would have been the best damage Sweet. for the moment, but. Sub -zero. Fortunately for Omi, was able to keep things stabilized. And now we go into another match here. Mercer, that 3-0, not going to be quite on the cards anymore. But he is still in the lead, so Omi still has to play it safe. Or maybe not even play it safe, but, you know, still has to be careful at the very least. So, this next game, I mean, if Omi's able to take this, we go into a game five instantly. And Omi... Well, we're not seeing the same caliber of flawless blocks like we did in Winners. Uh, we are seeing some pretty crucial com uh, combo drops in vital moments, you know? So I really hope that that doesn't continue. 
because that was almost two games in a row that Omi would have lost because he had the win in the palm of his hands and he dropped the combo. However, thankfully he recovered, you know, in the game that he just played. A flawless block, you know, Omi, because he'd used his defensive bar. Although the flawless block was there, no option to punish. But Mercer will know that. Mercer knows that you haven't got the one of each. He's, he's going to be a little bit less shy of throwing out the 4-3-4, right? Because what are you going to do about it? Oh, the double! Oh, but it gets clipped anyway, Mustard. He does indeed, Mercer. Not looking too phased by how that last round went. And another neutral jump. You know, it's like Mercer, particularly jump happy when he has the defensive bar. As long as he has that teleport to, like, help him kind of react in the moment. Wonderful we'll seem being a little bit more reserved now. Escape failed, though. That's a disaster. Uh-oh. Not committing either. Jump back and well looking for the big boot. It looks like Mercer's just jumping all over, but he's constantly looking for things, right? Looking for the big boot, looking for a button to whiff anything. Tries to punish, but a little bit too slow. Got whiffed up a cut, but no punish. Mercer, letting this one slip away a little bit, but still getting one hit at a time. Oh my no. goodness, that was quite a messy end to the round, but Mercer comes off better. He's still got that escape failed throw ready as well, unfortunately for Omi. A lot less committing from Mercy. He's, he's, he's whipping a lot of buttons, but he's not whipping full strings. The raw Again. jump. Decision there. Mercer with punish. The back two coming out for Omi. Now, corner pressure. That is where things can maybe come alive for Sub-Zero. But there's so much respect. Omi, he's expecting buttons. He wants to whip punish. He wants to maybe anti air. He did nothing. And it just allowed Mercer to escape the corner. And now he's pressuring. Another one. The crushing blow throw was spent, so that's just going to lead to more damage, if anything. He's not going to get any KB throws, but he's getting pushed back into the corner. Can Omi keep him here? He fights his way out again! You think you've got an opening, and he just up threes you for days. This should be the round win. One, two, four. And he gets now that. Yeah, that is where he needed to nail that combo. If, hey, if we saw another drop, that would have been it. Cue the music. Fight. Subway music with the on, on my screen it's the uh, MK2 Coliseum, so it's not quite the same, but it's better than nothing. And on the spectator screen is the Living Forest. I'll give any excuse to listen to the subway theme. My favourite. Thank you for putting it into the realm. That tree on the right, that's my reaction to hearing the subway theme every time. Which one? Oh, okay. That one. The one on the right. Whoa! Anyway, knockdown. And hang on a minute, homie, making this close. But as he gets put in the corner, maybe things will change. We'll see. Doesn't get the throw tech there. That's just a grab on its own. Ooh. Me down one, expecting a button press. No button press for Mercer, though. I was thinking maybe there's going to be a jump kick from that one, but not quite. Teleport counts in the back three. Mercer, not afraid to teleport himself in the corner. A fatal blow, ready for the scorpion. Dude, Dude Mercer's like hit. frozen up. Oh, he's done! What happened? That was crazy. I don't know. Mercer, Mercer, in a very uncharacteristic fashion, just kind of sat there for a while. Like, for someone as animated and mobile as Mercer is, I did not expect him to kind of calm down. I wonder if he was just like, look, my health is low, overhead low is coming, let me just react to it. But then Omi didn't do it for a while. And then the second he did let it go, it was like, maybe not when you'd expect, perhaps. Regardless, game five, Omi, he is dragging this set all the way back from a 2-0 one round deficit like it, it could not have been more against him he was down two games he was down a round he had remember there was that moment that mercer got a forward three right as omi jumped and if he just picked it up with a 1-1 before he hit the ground he would have won the set but it was that mistake that he didn't get that let omi wake up with buttons you know with punish the missed button and that gave him that that round you know we could trace this all the way back to that one mistake, and that's that's the worst kind of set if you're if you're Mercer here, because if this doesn't go well for Mercer, you know he's he's gonna think back straight away to that point and go, oh, if only I hit that one button at a better time, or maybe he'll be able to stop this comeback from happening. And he'd be like, thank goodness for that. What about Omi? Definitely playing really well now. This execution getting crispier, mistakes getting less for sure. Oh, hello. But this is where things get a little bit nervous for Mercer because he was working on so much momentum but in the moment someone like Omi brings it back in the fashion that he's done it. In a weird turn of adventure, you are now the one on the back foot even though you've spent a lot of the set being the one in control, right? But now he pressures. Oh, up. yeah, you want to challenge that, do you? Here comes the low. And the escape failed again, Mercer. So many grabs in his game plan, but that's a whip punish. And no defensive bar to break. So that's just going to be good damage on its own. Knockdown into more pressure, perhaps. 
And that's the pressure. As you can see, Obi. He just shows Ooh. respect on wake up and he just allows Mercer that to press. Kill. No, that won't kill. That won't kill. One more. Oh, he delays oh, the low. Double dash up as well. He is really trying to look for He's it. Dead. And there it is again. Omi. No bar though. <gasps> the whiff. Oh. Oh. oh, he did not need to go and blow that, but you know what? He'll take it. That is match point. Okay, okay, question. Instinctive hold or mash? Mash. <laughs> mash. I respect, <laughs> I respect it. I think, I respect I think it. so. It won the game, though. It won the game. Oh, no. Mercer, one, two, four. He gets the combo he's been looking for all game long. No drops this time. And Mercer trying so hard to fight his way out of this bad situation. Is Steve he going to spend? Oh. oh, no. He already had it. I didn't even realize. Yes, he did. He built it in round one. Okay, back threes. Mercer, can he bring this one back? Omi, his reactions have been so good. His flawless block's immaculate. But now... He is about to get his fatal blow. Tries to commit to the whole thing, but he can't. There's no defensive bar either. Spend it. Yeah. And we cash out. Final round. Both sides, Mustard. We'll see. Scorpion or Sub-Zero, who will win? Final question mark, question mark. So it's a crucial hit, because Mercer was able to bypass fatal blow entirely. Seal the deal. No, to play around it. Oh, hang on. Oh, Speed oh. Away, though. Mixy mix. We've seen the KBU, so the damage a lot less, but still enough to keep a lead. Oh, I think he tried to floor block that personally. That's why it was a regular hit, not counter hit. Can't with punish it from that far away. Remember, cold shoulder slide, not as good as the normal slide for speed. So from that range, Spear's a bit more likely to just get recovered. All right, looking for the trip. Little bit early with a counter, of course. But no ice ball. I wonder why Omi didn't want to go for the full combo. I'm not sure. But he might live to regret it as the 2 1 2 crushing blow comes out. And now this is a last oh, he might chance. Be dead. No, not enough. Not enough fire. Not enough fire. He is alive. And he's got a fatal blow. This is not over. One more That's hit and it will surely. be. Oh, and how much? How oh. much do you want to bet? How much do you want to bet that that was a flawless block attempt? I think it was. I would Long wager was everything on that for sure that that was a forward four into into flawless block attempt from Omi. His flawless blocks were so good the entire set, but that one final time that it would have been a game changer to do it. And I, I, I want to say as well, Mercer, not afraid. You know, the amount of times we saw him get flawless blocked and launched and take immense amounts of damage didn't seem to want to put him off. You know, he was dedicated the entire set of going for those non-stop. That does mean that the run back goes to Mercer in a game five. Omi, kudos for bringing it back to a game five. He was down two games and a, a match point round and potentially a last hit scenario. He was able to claw his way all the way back up to a final round game five, but unfortunately just was not able to finish the clutch. He had 99% of the clutch, but that last 1% is what was lacking unfortunately you know, it's, it's a it's a it's a tall order for anyone you know it's it's not easy to do that even right there mercer remembering the info from the previous set you know the the the, the play that won the winner's side the freeze into jump to into delay into overhead for the reset you know the cheeky stuff and there it is mercer for another time finds his way into a loser's finals I, if you're mercer you're gonna be happy about this right because mercer he was down he's had a, a a good day already right you know he took it over aso de matza 3-0 in round one losers losing round one to ob you know he's he's definitely waited this entire tournament for this run back and was able to win it and now secures himself another third place a decent you know minimum 200 dollars for him as he fights ranks for the right to get that match against Arn Kratos. So one of two things will happen here. We either see the run back in grand finals if Ranks wins, or we see Mercer get his shot, his first shot, in fact, at Arn Kratos in a long time. So what do we think is going to happen here? What, what do we predict in the Scorpion? I, I kind of feel like it's going to be Berserker versus Scorpion. I think we're going to see Berserker here again. I think so. Because no, you look at what normally inspires... Um any kind of other matchup apart from the Baraka from Ranks, and let's kind of look at it. So we saw the Shang Tsung. There's no way Ranks was going to want to fight Warlock versus Baraka. So he went Sub-Zero to cover both variations of Shang. And every other time he fights a hardcore zoner that's not Shang, uh, he has gone in with uh, the Raiden for the teleport. It's always Thunder Wave, isn't it? And I think the reason for that is because he wants to have the counter zoning. But against Scorpion, there's nothing Scorpion has that says, you know, I need to use 
anything that's not Baraka because you can rule with Scorpion. You can fight Scorpion with it. So uh, I do think there's a good chance of seeing it. But oh, so, I'm not gonna... so does chat. That's a practically yeah. an 80% poll result in favor of Mercer. I mean, Mercer Chat's has a lot of believing. fans. Mercer's got a lot of fans. Ranks, giving it a think. Who's it going to be? Baraka? Raiden? I mean, it could be so many characters on this part of the character select. But okay, Berserker is coming out. Do you Berserker? think that's how Ranks like made his character choices? He was he just, just like this that this of row of select. characters. That's who I'm playing. I'm only Maybe. playing this row. Maybe. Maybe. But here we go. Right. Losers finals. Whoever wins Losers this finals. series. October. Monthly Grand finals. finals. We'll see who gets it. Who gets to fight on Kratos? We'll find out, mate. Thank you all very much for joining us, by the way. Hopefully you're having a good time and you have whatever Halloween plans, whatever the case might be. We're going to start things off by watching some Mortal Kombat. I think that's a good idea. And if you are doing anything for Halloween, for goodness sake, do it responsibly. Social distancing doesn't just take a day off because <laughs> it's Halloween. Anyway, here comes the spear. Full combo now. And we're going to go just poke for poke so far. The trip guard of the teleport, the Mercer special. Always looking to punish that jump in. Oh, the there's that forward too. Immediately and just even, letting even the string Even 140 rock. damage for that, honestly, isn't bad either. That, and that's that's one of the, the scary things about the damage that Berserker gets. It really emphasizes how much damage Baraka's strings themselves actually do. Oh! Now that is the range you're going to see the block late the most because you're used to kind of like going in and out of block, kind of waiting for forward four. Almost like the, the same effect of like Cassie's shoulder. The dash up getting checked again, Mercer. That's something that Russian players do a lot as well, I've noticed, especially in open series. You see a lot from Decide, a lot from Mercer, a lot from Mine Kratos. Pokes to check forward movement, and there it is. Ooh. Fatal blow. Now, this will scale heavily because it started off a launch. Mercer, I don't think he uh, could have broke here. 1% yeah, in one it. Bar. But he can't throw anything to finish off. Oh, yeah, but he can from that range. Our ranks. That wasn't going to kill, but it was going to put him in a good situation when all you need is chip or multi hits. That's where Berserker thrives. And we got Baraka Zerka, chop chop. Multiple options to get multiple hits. Are we going to see two bars? No. Ooh, okay. Wake up buttons, yeah. however. There's the damage. Wake up jump from Mercer. The master of the wake up jump. Probably expecting a stagger there, I think. That's why the leg kebab immediately comes out. Reactionary block. Oh, the Brakazerka counter poke on the down four. And the second you start respecting it, that's where he starts to establish. All right, we blocked the back three. It's safe, but we are going to get a grab at the very least. Oh, is that block late? No, not quite. Almost, almost. Oh, he walked into that throw, though. Frank's definitely getting eager to finish this one. Flawless block. No, Mercer is getting flawless blocked. Non-stop today. <laughs> Did like, you hear that? That is crazy. What? Uh, Did you hear the toasty, by the way? No. Uh, if you ever go back and check the tapes, the second that down two came out after the finishing pause, you had the dusty. Yeah, that, that happens on the tournament stage. I, I know, I love it. I, I know it plays on the tournament stage, but the fact that it played there right as the game ended after the flawless block was like, Mwah, chef's kiss. It has Cherry the lowest. It has the it has the lower lower chance of happening, obviously overall in this game, but it only happens on that one stage. So you know, I'm sad that I missed it, Sub but it is what it is. Scorpion. Still, though, Mercer, Baraka. these flawless block gaps. Now that has been one thing that Mercer's done all day. He's been getting flawless blocked non-stop, but it hasn't it hasn't stopped him from doing the strings. I think he's kind of been okay to let you do it. Because here's the thing: getting flawless blocked is only a big deal against like like you're taking damage, but you're taking damage from an like an up two, so it scales a lot and it costs half the resources to do it. So I think sometimes you're almost like not afraid to get hit by it because you're not going to get hurt that much. And they've lost their ability to break away if you now hit them. So it can be a bit of a, you know, toss up as to whether it's worth it or not to even just take the damage and accept the risk. The problem is, even with like this, you know, Baraka, that fatal blow does a lot of damage. Um, you can cash out if you want as well. Like, I feel like Baraka, even though it's not Marauder, still doesn't tickle from his flaws, uh, from his flawless spot launches. But you just get to see wonderful different styles from all Baraka players. Um, there seems to be such a diverse group of Baraka players in competitive that. They all seem to specialize in one variation, don't they? You know, whether it was the stunner, the pro stunner with the marauders, the biohazard with the bone picker. We can play players like ranks with the berserker. It's just, 
but they all play the character so differently because of the variation they made. Baraka is definitely strange in that regard, where it's true, I don't think I can remember a Baraka player that actually plays more than one variation. I guess they offer such distinct playstyles. All for the hit. Off got to crushing blow as well. Didn't want to commit. I think maybe from that range, you have to remember, Baraka's forward four from max range is actually plus on block. So maybe he's trying to like tempt that distance. Fatal blow though. Blocked himself into it, but the oh commitment. Ops not to break away actually. Oh, does it late? Trying to get the punish. I respect it. Definitely looking for Mercer to end that and spear for the damage, I think. Thinking quite far ahead. Here's the down four into the trip. And the weight coming, just the buttons, Mercer. Don't know what was happening there, but the Meaty 1 1 just hitting him raw on Wake Up. It's going to allow a full unbreakable combo. Ranks kind of stealing that first round, I think. With punish. And saving the fatal blow in the process. After him, Berserker Baraka with fatal blow means he has two opportunities for big damage payout armor break. Whether it's charge, whether it's fatal blow. Speaking of which, oh, big damage incoming. Ooh, that is decent damage off one of his many launches. The down one coming out from Mercer because he acknowledges the jump in a bit too high up to really be plus in any way. Wait a minute, forward throw. Tries to go for the less obvious throw. I like the chase down. No whiff punish there from Mercer, but he's going to get a grab at the very least. But no breakaway, which does have oh, me no. nervous. Baraka Zerka, boom, boom, Another boom. Another three something, 330. Ranks definitely not got this one guaranteed yet, though. Oh, definitely not. Especially from this range. Oh, All it takes. always happens. Why does it always happen? I don't know. Spear. I, I do no not have an answer for you. Fight. But we see it work more than any other projectile from range that just does a crushing blow. Mercer's timing on it. So unusual, perhaps, that it always works out. And now he has all the momentum off the back of that round. Jump in. Boom! Punch. The dash up sweep trying to enforce the plus frames. They're barely plus on that forward too, but... Oh. Big neutral, but no! Not in time. Almost. Oh, I'm oh. He really wants the escape failed. He can, he's fishing for it so hard. Oh, Annie, yeah. Okay. Oh, but a wake up uppercut says no to your meaty. Uh oh. That back three going right underneath the poke. Here comes Mercer's opportunity, I think. Also, looking at the fact that Ranks, he has a breakaway. Mercer does not. Instant air to air. Doesn't get the blade charge. Too high up. The reverse grab, throwing him into the corner, but the fatal blow. If Mercer gets one fatal blow, he's in good trouble. Good trouble. Good situation. Tech. Is it going to be fatal blow? Time is going down though as well. That's what I'm looking at. Not again. Don't get hit by another one for goodness sake. He doesn't even need the crushing blow. He'll just do into fatal blow. Wait. Wait, is he alive? Teleport cancel? No! Oh, Ranks! No! Wait, punish with down one berserker. Punish with an uppercut. It would have done it. Ranks oh, with a the half choke. a second miscalculated. A half second at most miscalculated there, Mercer. Now, you know what? I love how he actually let that teleport rock there because all of us were thinking he's going to teleport cancel and try and get away, right? And he was like, I'm actually going to let the teleport rock because if you expect a teleport cancel, you might go for a poke. It might punish and then you obviously you can jail. So he was like, I'm going to let the teleport go fully, which was like the most unexpected thing, but it was blocked. But Ranks tried to punish with something that took less than a half a second too long if he put again hindsight is super easy if he just punished with an uppercut or something that wasn't a down one but i wonder if the down one was like expecting a teleport cancel but he blocked the full amp teleport so i don't know but that that is a high tension situation so chokes are understandable but unfortunately in that situation it's, it's so easy for us to go he should have done uppercut but in the heat of the moment the chaos of it the fact you are, you are never left. wired to punish with uppercut. So that is not something you would default to, right? Definitely not. Definitely, definitely not. But that ain't going to be Mercer's problem. However, he's going to get counter hit immediately. Nothing. Wow. I mean, maybe he expected the break. If you expect the break, you do the blade charge. 
Yeah, I know, but I'm just I'm just thinking of what potentials could have existed there. But I mean, there is a chance that Ranks is a bit flustered from what just happened, and maybe his execution is not quite there at the moment. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, there, there's absolutely a possibility oh, there. Speak oh, speak too soon. Maybe not. Oh, okay, yeah, well, all right. Yeah, we're, we're, oh, no, well, we're just talking mess. Oh, the pickup! <laughs> second foul! Oh! Did you see that? Me down one. Wow. Well, that's one now way that, to recover. That was a round to absolutely just undo what just happened. You know what I mean? Let's pick. Wait, well, I feel like we see a lot of Baraka players try and pick up off of like pokes that catch jumps, but oh, oh my, my god, Lord. boom, boom, boom! Oh, the restand as well. God, the he is disgusting angry. Soul of the feet, and again, and again, ranks is angry. He is His hungry. Pokes are actually from the future. But Mercer, we are seeing the flawless blocks, but he is bringing himself back into this matchup. And he waits for the roll. The down one. The escape into the back three. Now Fatal Blow's ready to go for Mercer. He can definitely take this round. Oh, if Ranks loses this round, that'd be tragic. Now Mercer again, flinging out that spear. Oh no. Counter hits the start of that poke. And the play. Oh, yeah, that, was a bait. that was 100% a bait. Mercer did an empty jump, knowing the flawless blocks have been rampant this round. Unfortunately for Ranks, he just gets a neutral jump too because he tried to flawless block. And that is Mercer playing around the momentum 100%. Using it against you. Both players now one round apiece trying to escape. Oh, that down four. Escape failed, failed for Baraka. Failed. Uh oh, that's scary. Escape failed on both throws. Another flawless block. If Mercer gets a throw tech, it's really good for him because he needs, ideally, to eliminate that crushing blow throw, I think. Side switch. Side switch again. A matchup of two characters that can absolutely switch sides whenever they want. Lovely, up three. And the tech! That's going to undo the crushing blow. Very important that Mercer was able to do that. Now the mix. Up three again. Really saying, I do not want to deal with this mix-up. Empty jump. Expecting the flawless block once more. Oh, we finally saw it. Yeah, he's got the confidence. I mean, he has breakaway. Oh, no. no. Off with his head. Slice. Now, that block late crushing blow. I actually, I, I can't remember the last time we saw that actually work outside of an armor break KB. But today, that's the second time we've seen it. I feel like Ranks is like using it in a new way that he hasn't before. You know, I feel like he almost exclusively saved it as a armor breaking crushing blow and just ignored it in the neutral but today we're seeing so much more of this neutral blade charge but it's like right on the end like he's doing a good job of like uh judging where the exact tip of that special is going to connect and even if they block it like i mean from that range are you are you gonna block it consistently are you gonna punish it consistently right like from that kind of distance i don't know about that but that does mean Scorpion. ranks now two to one yeah, we're, 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 we're trading game for game but ranks is looking good Ranks one, I, I feel like start that round one especially was him just making a statement. Like, yes, I may have just messed up a punish for a, for a win, but don't matter because I'm still playing 100%. And that's what we saw in that game. And then we saw Mercer adapt with those empty jumps to bait the flawless blocks. This is high level Mortal Kombat right here. But this is an important game for Ranks. The opportunity to maybe get revenge against Arn Kratos it might be easier said than done considering how the winner's finals went, but minimum grand finals considering this is the monthly finals there's more money to play for minimum three hundred dollars if you get second place and then it's four hundred for first there is a hundred dollars separating the placements so it's still a matchup you'd very much like to win but mercer has just been a bit more fast paced but grounded less jumps it's just been more sticking to the ground wow okay that's mercer just saying okay i'm back in this don't forget about me don't forget about the me. fastest rounds of the day if not the fastest oh my lord Mercer doesn't care we're punished there it is mercer with the reactions like a combination of mercer's reactions still being good and ranks also oh no 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 this round this game we actually might already be going to a game five less than a minute Oh, oh my god! Gets under the one? 
Okay, round one was 30 seconds and we're at 40 seconds. Okay, that that was a that oh. was a minute and a half match right there. That was actually turbo mode engaged. Hyper combat? What's it called? Turbo combat? Hyper combat? What's the what's the what's the combat code in nine that made everything really fast? Motor combat. Motor combat. Room a room vroom, vroom combat? Wait, didn't Baraka and Scorpion both have a car in motor combat? You know sure they did. I think they did. I, they did. I think yes. they did. I think they did. They Scorpion did. definitely did. I can't remember. I think Baraka did. I can't remember what his ability was, but I think it anyway. was just, yeah, no, he did. It was just a really like boring blade spark shot. Anyway, this is like super not relevant. Game, game five. Thinking out loud, as we always do here at the end of the day. Well, end of their day. We still have an entire North American bracket to go after this. However, final match. Between these two, find out who's going to get grand finals against Arn Kratos. Let's find out what's going on. That match was just quite literally, I think you blink and missed it, really. I feel like each player is doing a great job of just completely just shrugging off the last match. And that's been something that I've consistently seen, right? It's almost like a shifted gears every single round. And it's just a question of keeping up to where the other player's at. And I think that's, that's, that's not surprising, considering. Like, this is how Mercer plays. Ranks, I feel like, is a little bit more kind of like grounded, but is good at keeping up with others. I think a big part of that is like just his 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 base fundamentals, right? His force box at the right time. He's not extending too much. He's playing extremely safe. Wow, the challenge! Teleport, punishing it on re-entry on the other side. Mercer, really saving that meter. Another throw tech. He's done it twice in a row, but the down one chop chop. Sneaky stuff. Another up three. Mercer, his use of the up three has been highly effective. However, he has a lot of work to do here. And he just gets opened up with a 1-1. One, one. Looking oh, for luck. it. Now, Ranks, he's had a couple of hits here, but he's definitely playing it safer than usual. Like, he just does not want to commit to anything that he can die for. Not with this life lead, but play it too safe. You get thrown to death. He can. Still. He has had at least like, three hits that he could have turned into a win. And yeah, but no, Versa, slightly off the mark. The right idea, but the wrong time. And that's now match point for Ranks, this Berserker Baraka. Looking like it's going to make a grand final appearance. Oh, for the punish. You know, I said he's been playing safe. There's a curveball. You know, I said we've been shifting gears every round. Look no further than playing safe for an entire round and then starting off the next with a blade charge. Speaking of which, there's the ender. Boom, 25% done. I'd say unbreakable, but it really doesn't apply when Mercer has no breakaway to work with in the first place. The cancel teleport. He does play quite a risky game against Baraka using the teleport cancels because you don't have that breakaway. Not as prominent against Berserker than a Marauder or something, for example. But I mean, finally, you're, you're still, you're still launching with KBs into like mid 300. You know, you're, you're not tickling. Definitely not. The walk forward. He challenges so hard. He really wants him to press the wake up neutral jump. Mercer oh, special. That yeah, that, that is a Mercer neutral jump right there. Like an instant wake of neutral jump into a relatively late kick combo, like confirmed. No one doesn't like Mercer for that. Oh my god, that caught him? I've never wow. seen that. Magic of distance. Yeah, the absolute max of max range with punish. Ranks has no break either, so Mercer will play no games. And we will fatal blow, just a guarantee. And for another time, we're doing the final round of both players. Is it going to be... UK or is it going to be Russia in grand finals to fight on Kratos? We'll find out. I have no idea how to call it. Losing that fatal blow is a big deal for the way Mercer's been playing, but I mean, he's still got the throw KB. Speaking of KB, boom, there we go. 2-1-2. Two, two. Damage over time now, but the wake up down one to steal the momentum, but walking straight to the forward three. No, another throw. Half-life gone already for ranks. Mercer looking good. Oh no, ranks a very preemptive wake up attack. That's been very unlike him today. And I, oh my good ranks! You know what I said about shifting gears? He is playing in the future. We've got wake up like up threes from half screen. We've got wake up fatal blows immediately after. I mean, it's gotten some that damage. was either I mean, a, a last ditch effort or he's thrown in the towel. We'll see. Hang Force on, block. no! That was a momentum shift right there. Oh my oh goodness! Oh my god! Oh my good lord! Is this going to be where it falls apart for Mercer? The jump, the deep! Chop, chop, punished! Oh no! no. Yes! What on earth was that round end? That was Baraka in round three, still being a force to be reckoned with. 
but not quite enough. That was absolute... That was ranks just saying, I am down a ton of health. I am just gonna... I am just gonna go ham. And that is what we saw there. We saw Wake Up Fatal Blow connect after an up three completely whiffed. We then saw a flawless block into... And then we saw forward four KB chase down. Like, that went from looking like it was impossible round for ranks to ranks actually can make the comeback in like seconds because of the, the crushing blow saved for the last round the fatal blow saved but unfortunately down that like it, it, it was one risk too many you know what i mean it, it was one one dangerous play too many as we saw that down one into the fully held chop chop i think if ranks didn't go for the full distance there's maybe a chance for us because mercer he waited for the full time saw the full time and still didn't punish it with a full four three four right he still went for a four three didn't follow up and then did a throw instead that throw wasn't guaranteed so i don't know i feel like we could have gone a little bit wilder at the end even still after what happened but what a set that was absolutely one of the funnest sets we've watched today that was really good ranks you know sad to see him drop down here definitely becoming one of my favorite players to watch absolutely but well played to mercer that was a, a beautiful game five and that does now confirm that we are seeing a fresh matchup today in our grand finals as mercer and arn kratos will be duking it out to see who will be our october champion and taking home that 400 dollar prize will arn kratos get another one or will mercer get his first monthly win this is a matchup we've seen go both ways in the past so i'm definitely not gonna say it's an obvious win for arn kratos but who knows we will find out uh, after this upcoming break while we get this grand final ready but for you know the final time for eu before we do go to a break i want to remind all of you lovely people watching whether it be twitch or youtube that you can enter the open series yourself it is not just mortal Kombat. there are multiple games multiple fighting games in fact and all the info you oh, need yeah. especially on how to do it for mortal Kombat, is on compete.playstation.com you just need a ps4 and a connection to the internet and you're pretty much going to be sorted it could not be simpler to get involved and take part in. It's certainly a lot more streamlined than back in the day when we used to play in tournaments. Um, but we cannot recommend it enough. It's a great starting point. Or if you're a competitive player looking to win some money, it's a great player at winning some cash. We are going to go to a final break for Europe while we set up this grand final lobby. It's going to be another Russian showdown between Arn Kratos and Mercer. You don't want to miss it. We'll see you in a few minutes' time. The PS4 Tournament's Open Series has been full of fantastic finishes, killer combos, and a friendship or two. Let's go, friendship! That's what I'm talking about! We've seen promising new players and household names continue to dominate. This cannot be a full life comeback, surely, surely not. not. I refuse to believe it. Oh, oh, Marco, the reverse sweep! Do not miss a single moment of the PS4 Tournament's Open Series. PlayStation. The European bracket started off with streamer extraordinaire Serious Hitman taking on Sui Frazier, a noob cybot player that we hadn't actually seen in the Open Series for quite a while. Serious Hitman brought his newly practiced Terminator for the second week in a row, and the mix-up seemed to be too much for Sui Frazier to handle. Val returned after making top three in their Open Series debut last week to fight Scarlet Specialist Makaran in their own debut. It seemed like the newer the player, the stronger they would play, as Makaran came out the gate swinging with a 3-0 victory. Dubasic and Acid Mata had played many times in the Open Series, but this would be the first time since Dubasic had made the switch to Cabal. The mean streak was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cetrion, but Dubasic would have to try another week to finally achieve his breakout Cabal performance. In the upper semi-finals, Makaran had another chance to show off their impressive Scarlet play against Sirius Hitman. Sirius Hitman brought back out the Raiden to outmaneuver Scarlet's projectiles, and despite signs of life from Makaran, the Thunder God could not be controlled. He gets caught by the Amplify! <laughs> and that's the grab! Sleeps Like Lion would have a chance to make his first ever upper bracket finals, but he would have to overcome the literal wall of Atadamata. Playing better than we had ever seen before, Sleeps Like Lion took it down to the very final round, where his intense aggression allowed him to pull off the upset. Oh, oh the torpedo! Torpedo! 
upper bracket finals was an unexpected one between Serious Hitman and Sleeps Like Lion, both who had been having an impressive showing so far. A high-flying match took it to Game 5, where a surprise switch to Raijin Raiden and a last-minute comeback advanced Serious Hitman into his very first Open Series Grand Finals. He's still got it! My goodness! In the lower finals, Asada Masa earned the run back against Sleeps Like Lion, who defeated him earlier that day. It looked like Asada Masa had figured out the matchup during his lower bracket run, but a last minute adaptation from Sleeps Like Lion pulled things back in his favor. Neither Serious Hitman or Sleeps Like Lion had ever been to an Open Series Grand Finals, so we were guaranteed a brand new champion this time. In one of the most thrilling sets that we have ever seen in the Open Series, neither player refused to relent their aggression, but a final round uppercut brutality from Serious Hitman not only won him the tournament, but signified that he managed to do it without blocking in the final round. Oh, he in North America, Akira Yapo and K7 Show Off began the day with a matchup that we rarely get to see Cabal versus Spawn. The one Spawn's damage carried its weight as K7 pushed through to the upper bracket semi finals. Moving on to an even rarer matchup, 2 Easy's Squander Collector against newcomer Aztec's Totemic Kotal Khan. Aztec gave a masterclass in the power of Totemic in his Open Series debut, dominating the set with a clean 3 0. Continuing with the exciting sets, the Mighty Unjust and Biohazard would face off in round one in a matchup that could have easily been grand finals. As expected, both players would switch characters, but Noob Cybot was the final pick necessary for Mighty Unjust to take the set. Moving on, K7 Show Off and Aztec would clash in an incredibly high damage matchup. K7 took advantage of Totemic's lack of safety, punishing for massive amounts of damage. Even a switch to Ascension didn't help, as it was Spawn that came out on top. The other side of the upper semi-finals was a rematch from last week between the Mighty Unjust and Teaser. Mighty Unjust made great usage of Shang Tsung's rarely seen Soul Steel to become his opponent's character, one that he was already very familiar with, Sub-Zero. Now, he just killed Teaser with his own mix-up. He thanks morphed. to the Soul Steel. And he's now, dead anyway. He okay, so oh, he was Soul Steel! The upper bracket finals would see if K7 show off spawn would be able to stand up to the Mighty Unjust. The resounding answer was no, as the Mighty Unjust's noob Cybot was able to control all of the space that show off wanted to be in, winning the set decisively. Down in the lower bracket, Biohazard would now take on K7 Show Off to see who would get their run back against Mighty Unjust. The set went literally the closest it has ever been in the Open Series, as both players thought they had the health lead during a timeout. However, a 0.3% lead to K7 would be the ultimate deciding factor. Grand Finals would be a chance for K7 Show Off to win his first ever Open Series bracket, or the Mighty Unjust's chance to win his 20th. Sticking with the same characters, the set looked very similar to their match previously, with a 3-0 victory adding another victory to the Mighty Unjust's Open Series legacy. Welcome back, everybody, to the PS4 Tournament's MK11 Open Series Monthly Finals for October, where the Grand Finals between Mercer and Arn Kratos is just about to begin. So, Arn Kratos Mercer is going into this as the favorite, as he always does. Do we think Mercer has a chance here to put a dent in that armor? A chance? Yes. Likely? I'm not sure. I think Mercer has definitely been a player that, as I say a lot, I think on his best day, there aren't many players that he can't at least go toe-to-toe -to -toe with. I think it's a combination of his style, uh, his unpredictability, um, and his inability to be contained. You know, I, I think that generally makes him really versatile as a player. However, Arn Kratos has some of the best defense we have seen in a competitive player, and he's playing one of the most defensive characters in the game. So on a character matchup basis, I feel like Arn Kratos is going to have the edge in terms of 
clash of styles. But taking that out of the equation and even going by on Kratos versus Mercer, I feel like what Mercer thrives on isn't as likely to really catch out on Kratos. I feel like Mercer plays a big part on I know that you know that I know, right? That kind of dynamic of, right, I'm going to jump. But you're going to know that I've jumped at a bad time. So I'm going to go for a teleport if I think you're going to add it. But you're going to know that I'm going to do that. So I'm going to not teleport. But then maybe it'll be an empty jump because I think that you're going to expect that. I'm going to flawless block. So I'm going to make sure I don't do a button. You know what I mean? Those kind of like layers upon layers upon layers upon layers. I think that's what Mercer thrives on. And I think Ankratos is just too good at picking the most likely option, the safest option for him and committing, right? And he also, on defense, option selects a ton of his stuff which covers a lot of those options together. Matchup-wise, Mercer has beaten on Kratos in the past, but the last at least couple of times they've played since then, on Kratos has seemed to win convincingly. Even the time that Mercer beat on Kratos, on Kratos then ran it back in the same tournament. So I think overall, the evidence is pointing to on Kratos being the favorite to take this still. I think Mercer can absolutely have what it takes, but I think if we're going by just consistency and reliability my money is on on kratos here i would be expecting if there are any games taken maybe a 3-1 is the kind of safe bet a 3-0 is kind of what i i genuinely believe we could see here um, he's got him with the Warlock, though. Now, and Kratos does have faith in this matchup. There was a time where he used to use solely to exclusively for Scorpion. Uh, but the more and more he's playing the matchup, the more we are actually starting to see him pick uh, Warlock anyway. Um, I think if Mercer gets a game, I think it could be 3-1. You know, I think if there is a get, if there's a situation where Mercer gets any matches here, I just think the 3-1 is the safe bet. Um, but we'll see how this goes. On Kratos, clear favorite as far as I'm concerned. He's been the favorite of the Open Series all the time, and he continues to be. Nice to see Mercer get Grand Finals again. It's been a while since we've seen Mercer right here. I know he had that Brit, that insane week where he was just the slayer of all Jackies, but um, haven't seen him in a while, so it's good to have him back. Well, it is like we've, we mentioned before, right? Mercer, we haven't seen him on the stream in a while, but he's always playing every week. And, you know, a lot of the time we, we will check the Monday tournaments to see how the results went for the players that qualified. And Mercer's always up there. He's just like, what? You know, he got one loss, whereas everyone else got zero losses. Or maybe he got, you know, he just wasn't quite in the running for it, right? He's always super close. Like, Mercer is absolutely still in the trenches, you know, like, like, like putting in that time. As we come in, there's that full combo. Mercer saving his breaker. And you, you will notice again, it looks like another soul oh, steal on Kratos. Yeah, it will be. Big damage to return. On Kratos has more and more started to play a lot of soul steal in his game plan. Have you noticed that? I. I, I do find it quite confusing if I'm being honest because like when I see him like morph into characters we know he plays so like when he when he plays the mirror he morphs all the time or when he plays like other characters we know, he, we know he's dabbled in seeing him morph in the scorpion matchup I find quite confusing because I feel like that's the point of the soul steal right? and, that, and that has historically been Shang Tsung he's always been able to morph but it's never really been a mandatory part of his kit it's just there if you want to do it but in this game, right, you know, the crushing blows and the different things that it can kind of cater to. Oh, just out of the range. But no, big jumping kick. It's definitely more matchup dependent, I think. Maybe the idea of morphing into Scorpion is like, look, I'm going to morph into Scorpion, throw out a couple of forward three fours, right? You know, throw out some buttons, fish for counter hits, maybe get some damage. I don't see why you do it. I guess maybe it is the Warlock matchup as well. So I guess he's not going to spend a lot of the time at range anyway. But regardless... That is the first time of the day it hasn't worked out, though. So, you know, I'm going to reserve my judgment on the soul steals. There's that counter, counter hit for Mercer. A change of momentum. He's going to spend a bar of meter Ooh, just to secure. Expensive. 400, uh, 2kb damage over time. Highly damaging. Immediate tech. Oh, see a throw tech left them point blank. You don't see that every day. Answer him back. Here comes the ground eruption and Mercer, an opportunity here. However, he gets clipped and the fatal okay, blow just in case like he breaks. Yeah, I mean, what else is Shang going to get an opportunity to do it outside of wake up? We're just probably going to get scaled I mean, like, out. With this, with this health remaining, I definitely agree with this. This is the max damage you'd get off just a raw spark. 
You have no bar, but a meaty. Not bad damage. No, he walked into it, but no bar again. On Kratos. Oh, and oh, a neutral no. jump from out of absolutely nowhere. On Kratos. I think that was like the first time we've seen him neutral jump all like that first match. And it was the one time. And this goes exactly back to what you were saying before about what makes on Kratos so scary on defense. He just has this uncanny ability to just pick an option, do it, and it's going to work out. Even like then, right? Like it's a point blank neutral jump specifically looking for something on the ground in that instance, like an overhead, for example. See exactly that, boom, get hit, full life bar, come back sealed, thanks to it. And now, on Kratos, one game up now on the back of that. What a play to take that game. You did say a 3-0 is something you think we could see, and after seeing how that last round was going, I thought, well, maybe not. You know, maybe Mercer gonna take this first game and we're gonna go from there, but... <sighs> the clutch factor of on Kratos. Clutch, he, he has a huge clutch factor with a character that is not very good from behind. Like, Shang Tsung is an incredible character, top tier, absolutely, for sure. But he is not incredible when he's really far behind, you know? There are certain resources that he needs. Without bar, it's really hard for him to get damage in any fashion. But still, on Kratos makes it work. We're actually seeing him amplify ground eruption and neutrals as well. We don't normally see him do that. I think he really wants to establish that threat on that third fireball. Cool, the walk out, walk in. Man's playing MK1. Always, always. On again. Mercer just cannot move on wake up. On Kratos, always one step ahead. Can't amp again, but look, even at this life lead, it's just a special move at a time is all you need. Chip him away, no pick up, it doesn't matter again as long as you've got the life lead. Oh, no, we're just going for chip. Any damage he can. No tech either, he is just not extending. He's like, look, you can throw me, I don't care. Look at what this life lead I'm playing with. Oh, but there's the teleport. There's the anti-warlock special. Now Mercer has the potential to come back here with the fatal blow locked in, you always know. Okay, wait a minute, on Kratos. This he won't kill, but it'll be close. Yeah. He has I'm no actually, way to wait, this avoid might. this. This actually might kill. I think oh, so. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I think so. Oh, my God. Just I think enough. it was just enough. Yeah, I mean, because you're normally... You're so used to seeing a combo have that many hits and you expect it to scale. But in that instance, you kind of just think, surely, if it wouldn't have killed, Mercer wouldn't have done it, you know? I have faith in him. I have faith in his decision making. I thought maybe he was just trying to set up, like, the next strike will kill situation. Because I'm Kratos. Like, I don't think he even had a bar of defense. Yeah, we're not seeing Mercer floor block either. I wonder if it's just... I actually wonder what Scorpion can do about the ground eruption. Normally, a lot of players will just... They'll floor block the second one so they can move earlier. Some characters have, like, charging moves or whatever. I don't know what Scorpion's is. I imagine he can back two at certain ranges. Got another hit. The ground eruption adding up. And again, we were in this exact same scenario before. And Mercer made it. But he did it with a fatal blow that is no longer there. Oh. Escape fail. That'll make up for it. Does the momentum begin? Oh, oh and there is. No, oh. I think it is no it is no coincidence that the first time we've seen Mercer go for the flawless block bait is against a player that he has played many times. That like forward four into spear to beat flawless blocks, we only see him do that against opponents he is very familiar with. Because it's very dangerous to do that. Okay, okay, low into overhead. Flawless block, but no button. I think Uncratos is just looking to just establish the threat. Like, I will flawless block, just so you know. What's always been so good about Uncratos is his defense. It's what, it's just really... I would say it is his best thing, honestly. But it adds to that frustration factor. He's got the zoning, he's got the space control. But then when you get point blank, he has got the knowledge of when to poke. He's got the flawless blocks. He's got the anti-air. The text, the throw text for crying out loud. He did just spend if... both bars on the skull though. So that's going to be a lot of resources he's not going to keep. Holding the throw for now, but oh, that time again? will run out. Oh my goodness. But resource management. Oh, and he got it. The tight link. Yeah, that is not as easy as it looks getting that forward. Two, four, two. Oh. <gasps> Hang on a minute. There's no fatal blow. 
So there's still possibilities here. Oh, and he interrupts the stagger for frames. Expects the jump, I think. Let's it rock all the way. Mercer getting immediately punished. And it will be on Kratos taking another game here now. Only same one more of these, and he's in the Literally, money. It's practically the same thing. It's round three, super close, but not close enough on Kratos. How many of his games are doing this today? I feel like hella matches have been round three. Yeah, he always seems to clutch it out. A big thing as well on Kratos, this resource management. The, the way he's juggling this bar, you know, there's, there's a reason he's a Shang player that is willing to actually spend both bars of amp on the straight skull and still be able to win the round after it, right? Because the straight skull amp does come back pretty fast. Like, obviously, not, not all moves regenerate the same speed. And the bar comes back pretty fast after doing that. It's like orbiting hat speed, I think. Um, but even there, like, we saw him spend both bars on that. I don't even remember if he had the life lead. And then he just, he was patient. He didn't press, he didn't extend, he didn't throw, he didn't jump, he didn't do anything until that first bar was about to come back. And then, boom, then we saw him go for the jump and wake up. And then that was the moment he was ready to get the ground eruption. And that's the thing about Kratos. This defense and meter management, it's, it's some of the best we've ever seen in this game. Meter so, is so important. currently on Kratos showing us why he remains to be the clear favorite. But has he lost a game today? Uh, I don't believe so. I don't think he has. Well, like, after the set, we'll see the bracket. Or maybe yeah, we'll take a look at the bracket. See it there. But I don't think he's even lost a single match today. This is dominance, unlike we have seen from him in the Open Series. It's on he's Kratos being favorite. on Kratos, as far as I'm concerned. Looking for the meaty, Mercer. Yeah, we've been talking in droves about on Kratos, but if we shift over to Mercer, think what can he do? And it's really hard to say because what's Mercer's game plan built around? Catching you out in situations you're not expecting things. Tournament points, by the way. Shipping you down with throws. But if Arn Kratos is flawless blocking everything, if he's anti-airing you, if he's not getting caught out by a single teleport, if he's teching every throw except that one, <laughs> what do you do? You know, everything that Mercer uses to win Arn Kratos has an answer for. And it's just built in his game plan to have an answer for it. Optimized every step of the way. The number one player in Russia showing us why he is undisputed number one in Russia as far as I can see. And we continue to push on the dominance of Arn Kratos. Mercer does get somewhat of an opening here, but that stand in three must have so good. Uh-oh. This is looking bad. He's gone the morph. And oh, he's always fishing for the counter hit. He's fishing for the counter hit. Oh, I was actually convinced he was going to get punished in that jump in. Mercy right. has to fight for his life. He has the fatal blow, but the defense. Oh, hang on a minute. There it is. There it is. He's alive. He's alive. Spend that fatal blow. There it is. Boom. Okay, Mercer, he is not done yet. This is going to absolutely more than secure the round. And again, but how many times have we been in a situation, Ryan? Round three, no fatal blow for Mercer. The tournament point Fight. continues to exist for Arn Kratos, though. An expensive round for Mercer. Okay, escape failed again. Always looking towards these throws. But now Arn Kratos is not quite able to get the tech. Oh, there it, it is so, again. It's just so hard to tech from mid-screen because you haven't got any prior information. It is a complete 50-50. There's no other factors. Jump into grab. Lovely tech from Mercer. And the air attempt. Oh, Mercer tried to do something there. And it's the flawless block on Kratos. He had the meter to up to it, but he just didn't. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> side switch. Oh, Definitely a flawless block. A flawless block attempt, I think. The neutral jump into button press. Still low. There's the bar. Chip damage. Good flawless block. Oh, wake up down one, the turn steal. Back throw two. This is where Warlock can actually get some meatless conversions. That's the kind of damage you'll need. Big teleport anti air. And Mercer might actually have this. 2 1 2. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, Mercer, ah. he is not down yet. Okay. Another round three. The third round three game in a row. Same kind of thing. Fatal blow gone for Mercer. All those resources expired but this time the third time is the charm as he gets the the game on the board two to one now so we're not going to be seeing a three zero in the set but for mercer this is merely the first stretch of the grand finals you have to remember he is in the loser side he is going to have to reset the bracket first so he's gonna have to win this three out of five 
reset things and then do it again. But if you're on Kratos, you're playing for one match. You are playing for one game at this point. That's all you need. But still, getting one game on the board is the perfect way to start in this for Mercer. From that kind of deficit as well. Again, the same situation. Two games down and tournament point against him still clutches it out. That is the kind of clutch you desperately need. And you need to keep it going when it works. Oh, but Soul Eater. Soul Eater is the change. Now on Kratos is playing for the one game. He swapped away from that Warlock. Gone back I like to this, this matchup change. that he is... Yeah, I, I love this change. Because he's created such a weird flow in this grand finals, you know, where you're in Warlock mode, you're comfortable. You know, you're familiar with the zoning and the different angles. You have to kind of stand in the screen. And now he goes into Soul Eater, which is totally different. And he only has to win one game. So at the end of the day, he's forcing you to play for this one game that he needs to win. And now he's bringing a totally different game plan at you. Instant air to air, Ermac, slam, slam. Big damage. And you can already see just the, the difference in things. Tries Ooh. to whip punish against counter hit. You know, he was looking for a counter hit himself. Oh, wow. big pair. Double. Escape failed as well. Hang on a minute. Mercer can totally bring this one back. That was one of them escape fail bait throws. Delivery threw him out of the corner because he knew that in the corner was the quote-unquote right way to tag. Absolutely. Oh, and he throws oh, out of it. tries. He's dead. No, he's not. He'll, that's he'll barely survive. Down. Barely survive. If it was reverse throw, maybe. Never mind. The jump kick's good. Okay, one round okay. away from tying things up, though. Okay. Round two. This is what he needed. Mercer playing with a lot of respect and patience. He has to be so careful here. Let's the whole string rock just to be safe. You do definitely see players do that in MK11. They'll let the whole string go if it involves the moving forward out of danger. And it looks like Arn Kratos no, but you, is on you the can verge see of getting equalized. Mercer, yeah, Mercer is so much more mobile now. He knows he doesn't have to worry about walking into a ground eruption. Wake up, neutral jump. Oh! oh. Okay, oh my no, lord. there's the jail. Oh no, that could have been a huge hit. Plus frames. No flawless block from Mercer. Not that he would have been able to do much with it with no up two available. Didn't have the meter. 1-1 one, one knockdown. Oh, Wake up, no! oh, too eager. He tried I to do the on Kratos. Oh, but it didn't work for Kratos either. <laughs> Lost him around. <laughs> That's tournament point again. On Kratos plus frames. Disrespected once more. Teleport out the corner. Okay. Oh, another attempt of... Oh, hang on. That's a shame. That is yep. a damn shame. He tried to confirm. Kick, he tried switch. to confirm. No. Side switch with one bar. I like that. But the wake up jump again, Mercer. The dash. Even more of these bizarre flawless blocks just to try and shut down anything they can. The 1-1-4 one, one, doesn't work. Look at it gets caught trying to jump. Tournament point still for Kratos. That's Ermac. And that you can't break Mercer. He's only just built the defensive bar. And the block on the up three. Oh, Mercer no. tries so hard to fight him away. Oh dear. Is this gonna be it? Oh, he's dead. No, he missed it. No, oh, and the standing one by itself is all it's gonna take on Kratos, securing the October monthly finals in dominating fashion. And the winner's side, no less, with Shang Tsung once more. Damn. Mercer was so close to bringing that back, though. Like, he had everything going towards him. But that wake up fatal blow, I, I, I feel like that wake up fatal blow was like the forbidden fruit, you know what I mean? Like, if he hit it, sure, he would have won, but that exact play is what just won him the game because he baited on Kratos doing the same thing. But unfortunately, he fell into the same the same temptation. And now the tournament is complete for October, as on Kratos is going to be the grand champion to no huge surprise. He definitely is one of, if not the most dangerous player in the European slash Russian side of the Open Series. He has a really good success ratio. The worst he's ever placed is second. And he's played in many of these cups. So that is quite the accolade to earn. Congratulations all round, I think. Absolutely. And Mercer made it closer than maybe I expected things to be. Um, so it's really good that he was able to kind of get that last little burst of momentum. Wasn't enough to put a stop to Arn Kratos, but absolutely able to cement himself as a top level Russian player. Great to see him back. And we hadn't seen him in a while. Coming back in for the monthly finals and doing the damage that he was able to do, always good. And not a bad little payday either, is it? So that is going to conclude 
the European side of October. Coming to an end on Kratos, the grand champion, but that is only half of tonight's action. We're going to take one final look at the bracket here and uh, kind of confirm on Kratos 3-0, 3-0, 3-0. That was the three, first one. match he'd lost in the whole tournament, was that one to Mercer. That is close stuff. Very, almost very close. As, yeah, that is as one-sided almost as you can physically get. Good Lord. I mean, the, the, for the final section um, of the tournament, I mean... Every game seemed to be close, yet on Kratos is able to win, you know, the final matchup. That's kind of ridiculous. But like I said, it's only half of today's action. We've got North America up next, which will be starting. The time zone changing in the UK is completely messed with my clock. But soon, as you can see there, 2 p.m. PT in North America. About an hour and a half from now. About an hour and a half. About an hour and a half. And then November is where the combat will continue and remember november as well oh things are going to change up some aren't they and it's not just mortal combat that you can tune into the monthly finals for there is bb tag there is soul caliber and there's more fighting games where that came from compete.playstation.com that's all the information that you need to get involved in these cups and please do we'd love to see you and we'd love to commentate your matches and see you on stream but for the first half of the day, that's all we have time for. We are going to now go for a bit of a refresh, grab a drink, grab some food, whatever the case may be, where you are in the world. Hopefully everyone's staying safe and all that good stuff. And uh, we will be back shortly for some North America monthly finals. Thanks for watching. If you are going to stick around, please do. We'd love to see you. And North America promises to be just as exciting. Yes. With all the continuing storylines. So go take a break. We'll be back soon for North America. See you Thank you.